and uh, looks like it's pretty well split between Yellow Jacket fans and Cardinal fans. Yeah, a lot of Yellow Jacket fans making the trip from Berea uh, for the for the Otterbein Cardinals. A lot of recruits uh, on their visits tonight at Otterbein, so uh, definitely a bigger crowd than normal. But uh, it was a, a scholarship day as well at Otterbein, so a lot of people just in attendance uh, after they had their scholarship day. So it, it should be a fun atmosphere here tonight at the Reich. Let's take a look at the conference standings. All other games in the OAC have gone final, so these are the most up-to-date league standings. Marietta won today again 20-0, 13-0 in league play. They're number one in the league. Uh, right behind them, Mount U, 11-2 in league play. JCU 10-3. They got a win over Capital today. In the four spot are these Yellow Jackets at 8-5. Wilmington 6-4 in sixth place. Ohio Northern 5-8. Heidelberg in seventh place at 4-9 in league play. And then tied for eighth place in the conference is Muskingum and Capital at 3-10. And, and then in the cellar is Otterbein at 2-11 in Ohio Athletic Conference play. As I said, all other games have have gone final. They're all three o'clock tips earlier today, so let's get you the finals from around the OAC. John Carroll barely beat Capital earlier today in University Heights, 65-63, a very close game. Marietta beat Wilmington at home, 85-75. Ohio Northern ended up falling uh, at home, 86-79 uh, to Mount Union today, and Heidelberg in a high-scoring game beat Muskingum earlier today in New Concord, 93-87, a game in which Logan Kimmel got his 1,000th career point as a Muskingum Muskie, so a lot of good games around the conference, and we hope our game is equally exciting. Yeah, and uh, that game against John Carroll that Capital played, uh, having John Carroll only put up 65 points, that is a very big accomplishment because that's a team that can get up and down the floor and really run uh, and get in transition. I assume John Carroll probably didn't shoot the basketball very well because they do get up a lot of shots, but uh, can, uh, Capital uh, really playing some pretty good basketball here down the stretch. One other score to get you in. Uh Berea had already went final earlier today. Unfortunately, the Lady Cardinals lost a tough one, 70 to 68, despite being up 44 to 34 at halftime. Amari Huck led all scores with 19 points in that game, so in an unfortunate loss for the Lady Cards. We're going to pause now and throw it down to the PA announcer, Bob Kennedy, for the playing of the National Anthem here from the Wright Center. Cardinal Pep Band here from the Reich Center playing the National Anthem under the baton of Michael Janczak. It's time now for the starting lineups here for the Reich Center. First for the visiting Yellow Jackets. First for the Yellow Jackets, it'll be as follows at the guard position. It'll be number two, Jaron Crow, the senior guard, standing at six foot from Menor, Ohio. Then it'll be number three, Justin Roth, the leading scorer in the OAC, senior guard, standing at six foot four from Parma, Ohio. It'll be number 10, Matt Dennis, the senior forward, standing at six foot five from Spring Hill, Florida. Also at the guard position will be number 30, Cameron Kuhn, who Coach Mills told us to keep our eye on, the freshman guard, standing at six foot one from Vermilion, Ohio. And then number 33, Jake Featheroff rounds, off, rounds out the roster for Baldwin Wallace, the freshman forward standing at six foot seven from Norwalk, Ohio. The Yellow Jackets coming to this game 14 and six overall, eight and five in league play. They're in fourth place in the conference. They're coached by Dwayne Sheldon in his seventh season leading the Yellow Jackets. Now for your hometown Otterbein Cardinals, they'll take the floor the same way they did against JCU in the backcourt. Running the point guard position, number three, Jake Phil, sophomore, 5'11", out of Zanesville High School. And number 10, Daryl Miller III, freshman guard, 5'11", out of New Albany High School. Up front for Otterbein, they'll have number five, Brian McKenzie, sophomore forward, 6'5", 
six foot two out of Westlake, Ohio, making his second start of, excuse me, third start of the season. Number 23, Grant Fenner, sophomore forward, six five out of Shelby High School, and right next to him will be number 32, Mark McEwen, junior forward, six foot six inches tall out of Butler, Ohio. Otterbein coming into this game three and seventeen on the year, two and eleven in league play. They're coached by Todd Adrian in his third year here in Westerville. The officials for today's game as selected by the Ohio Athletic Conference: Tyson Glenn. Vic Brady and Simon Carter. These two teams have a very long history. First playing back in the 1915-16 season. Otterbein holds the all-time series advantage 57-46, although Otterbein does have a seven-game losing streak to the Yellow Jackets. The Cards mixing it up a bit. They're in their red uniforms today here at the Reich Center, usually in their tans, but going with the red today. And they have the tan lettering and tan numbering with the words Otterbein across their chest. Yellow Jackets in their visiting yellow uniforms with the always favorite brown trim, brown lettering, and numbering. It'll be Mark McEwen and Jake Fetheroff going out for the opening tip. Otterbein controls it on the left side of the floor, and it ends up in the hands of the freshman guard, Daryl Miller III, who has it near center circle. He'll send it over to Phyllis on the far side wing, guarded there by Kuhn, going off of a screen from Grant Finner, gets it near side wing to Brian McKenzie, tries to dribble around the perimeter, hands it off to Finner, top of the key over far side wing. It's Miller with just 15 on the shot clock now. Miller backs his dribble up. High on the left side of the floor. Gets it to McKenzie in the far side corner where he's guarded by Roth. Now down to seven on the shot clock. Kicks it out to Finner. Three on the way. Top of the arc is no good. Just barely nicks the front of the rim and BW comes down with the rebound. Roth brings it down the floor for the Yellow Jackets. He's looking to score quickly as he cuts down the right side of the lane and gets an easy layup over the top of McKenzie. Yeah, it was a good finish there by Justin Roth, and right away we see why he's the leading scorer in the OAC. Great take to the basket. Phil has it. Phyllis has it far side wing. Now he's being double teamed at the top of the point. Gets it to McKenzie on the left point. Otterbein trailing by two, a minute removed in this ball game. It'll be Phyllis near side wing, trying to lob it down low to McEwen. He does so in the low block. McEwen looking to post up. We'll hand it back off to Miller near side wing. Tries to cut towards the basket. Out to McEwen. Pump fakes a three-pointer. Cuts towards the hoop. Pump fakes in the key. Goes with an up and under layup, and he gets it to fall on the left side of the rim. We're tied up at two. Great job getting the athletic Matt Dennis up in the air, and then he goes right up under him. Good move by Mark McEwen to get the bucket. Three-pointer on the way from Roth. Near side wing with a hand in his face, and he knocks it down. It's 5-2. Yellow Jackets on top of the Cardinals early. That's what you can't have if you're otter buying. That's a a good defensive possession, but can't give Justin Roth any room. Miller gets it to Phyllis on the near side wing where he's guarded by Roth, trying to find someone down low. He goes off a screen from McEwen, feeds it back to McEwen, near side wing, who looks to cut towards the basket. Instead, hands off to McKenzie. McKenzie into the low block. Now he'll circle it out. Out to the near circle to Phyllis, who sends it over to Miller, far side wing. Trying to go off a screen from Finner, and he has it picked out of his back pocket, a turnover, and it ends up in the hands of Roth, who bounce pass into the low block, pump fakes, and hands it off right to Jake Fetherloff, who's there for an easy putback right in front of the rim. And now Mark McEwen is down on the floor for Otterbein, and he's in some significant pain as it looks like he's holding that right knee, and that is not what Otterbein needed. They already have two of their post guys injured, not in this game with Matt Hughes and Clayton Schaefer, and the athletic training staff is going to come out and have a look at Mark McEwen. And Marshall Crum going to check into this game for Mark McEwen. Now, Marshall... David, he, he did not play very well at the beginning of this year, um, but in the in the previous season, he did play very well. He was averaging around nine points a game, also had five rebounds as well. Uh, Marshall's a guy that he can give you the production, maybe not of what Mark McEwen has as he is down on the ground, and now he's get, having to get helped off the floor. This is not good if you're Otterbein. Yeah, he can't put any weight at all on that right knee, and McEwen's been one of the few guys that's really been uh, stable this whole year, playing almost the entire season injury-free, and We'll see what Coach Adrian does to replace him down low as Otterbein already decimated with injuries in the post position. And as we said, the only senior on the team, Marshall Crum, will be asked to replace him. And he inbounds it to Miller, who slowly brings it down the floor. Otterbein trailing 7-2 with 17.55 to go in the first half. McKenzie will get it to Miller in the near side corner, who rounds, runs around the three-point line. Gets it over to Phyllis, far side wing, where he's guarded by Kuhn. Phyllis looking to drive to the hoop. Picks up his dribble at the top of the key, hands off to Crum. Gets it to Miller, near side wing. Trying to spin out of a double team. Lo lobs it to Marshall into the low block. Almost goes out of bounds. Feeds it to Finner, though, with a nice pass. And Finner is there for a layup on the left side of the rim. 7-4, Otterbein trails. Yeah, that's a great job there by Marshall Crum. Penetrated out of the short corner and down the baseline. And he found Grant Fenner cutting to the basket from the high post. Good, good play by Marshall Crum. Coons going to let a long three-pointer fly from NBA range from the far side wing and it rattles in. BW two for two on three-pointers early on, and they're up 10-4 over the Redbirds. Otterbein cannot allow those three-point looks for Baldwin-Wallace. Baldwin-Wallace in this game already has too many looks from the outside. McKenzie being pressured at the top of the key, feeds it to Phyllis near side wing. 
Phyllis trying to go off of a screen from Marshall Crum. He does so as he circles the three-point line. Gets it over far side wing to Miller. Lobs it down low to Crum, and it's intercepted away. And they push it down the floor quickly to Justin Roth, who's going to slow things down now at the top of the key for the Yellow Jackets, who are up 10-4. Pump fakes a three-pointer. Swings it over to the far side of the floor to Crow. Crow trying to go off of a screen now from Dennis, and a whistle and a foul, and they're going to get that on the Yellow Jackets. Looks like an illegal screen. Yeah, it's a great job there by Marshall Crum as he hedged out very high when Justin Roth came off that screen because he was ready to pull the trigger. And then on the same play, Marshall Crum also hedges out on Justin Crow and ends up uh, allowing Matt Dennis to pick up the, uh, the offensive foul. So Marshall Crum, great defensive sequence as well with hedging on screens. The foul was on the senior forward from Florida. Matt Dennis, his first, team's first. Otterbein basketball left side of the floor. Fenner has it far side wing working against Matt Dennis. Being bothered now right along the sideline. He'll hand it off behind him to Jake Phyllis, who surveys the defense. Shot clock down to 15 now for Otterbein. Phyllis still on the far side wing, holding his dribble. Gets it into the far side corner to Grant Finner. Finner's got to go down to 10 on the shot clock as he cuts towards the key. Goes with a hook shot with the right. It's no good. Crum's there for the rebound for Otterbein, and he's there for the putback on the right side of the rim. What a job by Marshall Crum, and the cards trail by just four now. Already made an impact, and he's only played about two minutes in this basketball game. David Marshall Crum really making his presence known for Otterbein. Dennis has a far side wing. Rifles it down low. It's tipped, and it's intercepted by Jake Phils, who looks to push quickly down the floor for Otterbein. Pull-up jumper from the free throw line. Sits on the front of the rim, and it falls, and the cards trail by just two now. 10-8 with 15.45 to go in the first half. And that's where Jake Phyllis is so good in transition. That pull up is very, very good for Jake Phyllis. Over on the far side wing, it's uh, Yellow Jacket basketballs. Kuhn looks to uh, go towards the basket. Phyllis picked it from his back pocket. He has it now one-on-one -on -one as he looks to go towards the hoop with a layup on the right side of the rim and one as Jake Phyllis falls into the student section and he'll have a chance to make this a Otterbein lead. Yeah, it's a great finish there by Jake Phyllis. Gets the steal, goes coast to coast, and he went right into Fetheroff. David, that's the reason that Fetheroff picked up that foul. Jake Phyllis, instead of shying away from the contact, went into the bigger body of Fetheroff, didn't allow him to use his length against Jake Phyllis, and he puts up the bucket and now has a chance to give Otterbein the lead. Phyllis on the season, an 81% free throw shooter. First is on the way, and it sits on the front of the rim, and it falls, and the guards have their first lead of the game, 11-10 with 15 and a half to go in the first half. There were some substitutions for the Yellow Jackets. Number 22, Zach Warner checked into the ball game and number 25, Ryan Walsh. They'll have it at the near side wing to Kuhn. He'll feed it back to Crow at the top of the point. He's being pressured as he throws into the low block, posting up on Brian McKenzie and Ryan Walsh gets an easy layup on the left side of the rim. BW back on top, 12-11. Yeah, and BW right there, a good offensive response for Otterbein who just went on a little bit of a run. Now we'll see if Otterbein can respond right back. Miller running the point guard position for Otterbein. Bounce pass it into the high post to Finner. Back over to Miller. Far side wing. Pump fakes a three-pointer and slows things down now as he hands it off to Jake Phyllis, who's guarded by Kuhn at the top of the key. Phyllis is looking to drive. Steps inside the arc. Let's a long two-pointer fly. No good. Fighting for the rebound down low. Who comes up with it? It's the Yellow Jacket. Ryan Walsh picked it up off of the ground. On the right side of the floor now, it's BW basketball. Roth has it at the right point as he backs up his dribble, sends it over far side wing to Zach Warner. He'll hand it off to Kuhn, who looks to cut towards the basket. Kuhn at the top of the key, picks up his dribble, gets it to the near side wing to Justin Roth, where he's guarded by Miller. Roth looks to cut towards the basket. Pull up three-pointer, top of the key, nothing but net for the OAC's best three-point shooter, and he's two for two from long range now. BW up 15-11. Justin Roth so long and has such great athleticism that he can step back and do that, and that's a great shot by Justin Roth. McKenzie feeds it into the low block to Marshall Crum, who stepped on the baseline as he tried to make a move. He got the layup, but not before. He steps on the red end line there, and that'll be Otterbein's first turnover of the basketball yeah, game. Yeah, and that's a good move there by Marshall Crum. Used his drop, step, and spun right off the defender. Just didn't realize where his footing was, and uh, Baldwin Wallace will take over the possession. But Trey Miller is the guy that's been put on Roth. We'll see if uh, Otterbein goes with a little longer arms on Justin Roth. They try to throw it down low, and again, it's tipped away, and it's Jake Phillips who comes up with it yet again for Otterbein as he pushes down the floor. He tries to find Moyer in the far side corner, and it's off of the hands of Moyer. Has a great job by Kuhn that time. Saves it from going out of bounds by throwing it at the chest of Chase Moyer. It goes out of bounds, and it's going to stay with the Yellow Jackets on the left side of the floor. Otterbein tried to move too quickly that time. Yeah, I think that time Jake Phyllis, you know, he's been a guy that uh, really has produced early in this game, and he probably should have taken that one himself, maybe being a little too unselfish there. Saw Chase Moyer cutting down, but that's a great job of Cameron Kuhn there splitting, and he, uh, he was not allowing uh, Jake Phyllis to realize what he was going to do if he was going to go with Chase Moyer or come and pick up Jake Phyllis. So a good job of splitting the two players right there by Cameron Kuhn. 
It'll be Yellow Jacket basketball as they inbound, working left to right as we view them up top. 15-11 over the Otterbein Cardinals. Walsh will have it at the top of the key as he'll hand it off to Kuhn, who circles around from behind him at the near side wing. Back over to Crow on the far side. Rifles it to Walsh down low and a foul on Chase Moyer as he jumped over top of uh, Walsh's back as he went with a pump fake down in the low block and Moyer fell for it. Yeah, it's going to be Moyer's first foul of the game. And, and Chase Moyer, he's, uh, he has not made the impact that he has wanted to early in this basketball game. But we'll see if he can get going. He's going to have to shoot uh, quick, very well in this game. Quick inbound pass goes to Walsh, who goes with a pump fake underneath the basket. But he stepped on the baseline as well. And that'll be a Yellow Jacket turnover. They're fifth already in the basketball game. So it'll be Cardinal basketball moving right to left, trailing 15-11 with 13.33 to go in the first half. Yeah. As and again, guess who got his hand in there? Jake Phyllis stripped the ball away from Ryan Walsh, didn't let him go up with it, and then it went off of Walsh's hands. Good job by Jake Phyllis on that possession as Miller well. Miller will give it to McKenzie at the top of the key, moves his dribble to the left point where he picks it up, back out to Miller, top of the three-point line, calls out a play now. Shot clock down to 15 as he hands it off to Chase Moore behind him. Left point off of a screen from Marshall Crum. Picks up his dribble as he bounce pass it into the low block. Tipped away. Phils comes up with it in the backcourt. Feeds it to Crum underneath the basket. And Crum trying to go with an up and under layup is fouled underneath the hoop. And Marshall Crum will head to the charity stripe for Otterbein to shoot two. Unfortunately for the cards, Marshall has not had the best season from the charity stripe for Otterbein. Shooting just 50% on the year. 14 of 28. The foul went on number 25, Ryan Walsh. His first, team's uh, third. Yeah, and David Wall, Otterbein has really given up Justin Roth uh, hitting some, some big shots as Marshall knocks down the first free throw. It, it, they've really played very well defensively. I mean, besides uh, Justin Roth and the three-pointer from Cameron Kuhn, this has been a pretty good defensive effort for Otterbein. They have not allowed the role players of Baldwin Wallace to start to get going in this game, which is something that they cannot allow if they want to win this game. Marshall Crum knocks down the pair, so he makes me eat his, my own words as he's up to four points in this game. Brandon Gleam, the sophomore, the local guy out of Hilliard Davidson, checks in the game for coach, uh, for the coach for BW, and he replaces Justin Roth. It'll be Yellow Jacket basketball on the right side of the floor as they get it to Kuhn, who sends it back to Crow. Long three-pointer on the way. He's off the crossbar. No good. Tipped around into the backcourt, and Gleam gets the rebound on the far side of the floor for the Yellow Jackets. Fresh shot clock for BW now as they're up by two as Gleam looks to cut it towards the hoop. Kicks it out to Kuhn in the near side corner. Backs up his dribble to the right point. Feeds it to the near side wing. Back over to Kuhn. Pump fakes a three-pointer against Moyer. Cuts towards the basket. Goes up with a shot in the low block. It's no good. And an offensive foul is going to be called on Kuhn. And David, right now, Otterbein really doing the little things. Brian McKenzie there taking the charge. Marshall Crum being able to draw the foul and then knock down the free throws. Otterbein really just has had a very good game doing the things that they just have not done all season, getting loose balls, getting their hands in on steals. They, they've played very well up to this point. A majority of it is coming off of defense and off of turnovers that they're forcing Baldwin Wallace into. Christian Meister is going to check in the game for the first time, and he has the basketball on the far side of the floor. Gets it to Moyer, top of the key. Otterbein trailing 15-13 with 12-15 as they bounce pass it into Phyllis, and the low block loses the basketball and a whistle and a foul as Jake lost his footing right in front of the hoop and tried to pick it up was McKenzie, but before that we have a whistle and a foul. I didn't see who they got it they on. They actually got a kick ball as okay. the ball was kicked uh, before it even got to McKenzie, but a good job by Jake Phyllis of trying to find McKenzie as he fall was falling down. Meister will lob it to Crum at the free throw line from the left baseline who hands it right back off to Meister. Being pressured, near side wing, gets it to uh, Moyer, lobs into the low block to Marshall Crum, who's posting up, goes up, has his shot rejected. McKenzie gets the rebound for Otterbein, tries to get the putback right of the rim. No good, gets his own putback, and he's fouled, and he'll have a chance to go to the charity strike. That's and a great finish there by Brian McKenzie. He does such a good job of drawing contact, but right there, normally we see him miss that shot, but now with that strength that he's built up in this offseason, he puts that one in. Great job by Brian McKenzie of using his strength and fighting through the contact. All tied up at 15, McKenzie, a good free throw shooter this year, just under 80% on the season. And we will see substitutions now for the Yellow Jackets as number 25, Ryan Walsh, will head to the bench. The foul was on him, his second, and it was team's fifth. We're also going to see Marshall Crump check out the game, and Aaron Malley, the freshman out of Marion, Ohio, will replace him. Another substitution for Coach Dwayne Sheldon as Zach Brandy will check into the game, and he will replace Kuhn out as the fifth member of the floor for the Yellow Jackets as McKenzie to give Otterbein their second lead of the basketball game. Let's it fly, nothing but net, and the cards are up 16-15 with 11.56 to go in the first half of our ball game. Crow will run the point guard position for the brown and yellow as he brings it down the floor, sends it over to the far side wing, gets it to the top of the key to Zach Brandy now. Back over far side wing, it's Wagner. 
He'll send it to the near side wing to Featherloft. He'll get it back to the top of the key. Three-pointer on the way from Gleam, and nothing but net for the local guy as he buries it, and BW hot from long range. They're four for four now, and they have an 18-16 lead as Phyllis has it on the left side of the floor for Otterbein now as he circles around the three-point arc. Crow playing defense on him. Has it high on the right, going off of a screen from McKenzie. He's being uh, double-teamed now as he gets it to Malley, near side wing, hands it off to Christian Meister. Shot clock down to 15 as Meister runs down the right side of the lane, gets a layup to sit on the rim and fall, and Christian Meister has his first points of the contest, and we're tied up at 18 apiece as Crow has it on the far side of the floor now for BW. Hands it back off, far side wing, circling around the three-point arc. They get it to Brandy, who's guarded by Chase Moyer. Brandy with an in-between-the-leg dribble, backs up, his dribble now towards center circle as the shot clock is under 20. Game clock to 10.55. We'll feed it to Gleam, who takes a jumper from the elbow, and he's fouled by Christian Meister as he airballed it, and Gleam will go to the line, and he'll shoot two. Yeah, and that's a little confusion defensively there by Christian Meister. He didn't communicate very well off that screen, and Gleam was able to, to get a good look at it before Christian Meister fouled him, and he'll head to the line. But Christian Meister, a guy that when Coach Adrian, after the uh, Mount Union game, as Gleam knocks down the free throw, talked with us about him not just being a shooter. And he's really picked up his confidence at 15 points against John Carroll, and then right there, a great take to the bucket on the right side. So Christian Meister really getting his confidence back uh, in the season. Gleam on the season after making the first one, now 19 of 21 from the charity stripe. Second one on the way, off the crossbar, no good. Tipped around and it's tipped right into the hands of BW and they'll feed it back out to Gleam. Gets it near side wing, three pointer on the way from Warner, no good off the crossbar and the rebound is pulled down by Aaron Malley for the Otterbein Cardinals. That's the first missed three pointer of the game for Baldwin Wallace. 18-19, the Yellow Jackets on top of the Cardinals almost at the halfway point in the first half. Phyllis will get it to Malley near side wing. Tries to hand off to Meister, he does so as Meister circles towards the near side wing right in front of us. Cuts it to the top of the key, over to Phyllis at right point. He's gonna do a three-pointer with a hand in his face. It's off the crossbar, no. McKenzie, though, gets the rebound in the backcourt for Otterbein, and the Cardinals have a fresh shot clock as Phyllis will look over to Coach Adrian to get a fresh play, and he calls it out for his teammates to follow. High on the right side of the floor, Jake continues his dribble off of a screen from Malley, sends it into the corner, gets it to a cutting Malley to the basket, who gets a bank shot on the right side of the rim, and Otterbein's back up 2019. What a pass that was that time. Yeah, and what a finish there by Aaron Malley. Went into contact, knew he was going to get hit as he goes up, and is able to finish. Big shot there by the freshman. Near side wing, Gleam has it. He'll send it over into the corner to Warner, where he's guarded by Jake Phillips. Three-pointer on the way, far side wing, nothing but net. As Zach Warner knocks it down, he had a huge game the first time he played Otterbein. 15 points, 5 of 6 on 3-pointers. He's having a huge game here, and he puts the Yellow Jackets back on top. 22 to 20, 9 and a half to go in the first half as Phyllis has it at the top of the key for Otterbein now. On the left side of the floor to McKenzie, who looks to cut towards the basket. Tried to bounce pass it into the low block, but I think it went off of his shoe, and it goes out of bounds, and it'll be another Otterbein turnover. Two substitutions for Coach Adrian. Grant Finner and Miller the third will check in the game. They'll replace McKenzie and Phyllis. And uh, Brian McKenzie uh, was yelled at there by Coach Adrian uh, because he wants him to go over the screen. Uh, uh, Brian McKenzie went under the screen there, and Warner was able to knock down the three. So expect Otterbein to go over the screen and challenge Baldwin Wallace taking the ball to the hoop. Gleam will send it over to Roth, far side wing, where he's guarded by Miller, and a hand check foul on Miller as he reached a little too far that time on Justin Roth. Yeah, that one, uh, actually, he just kind of got the forearm on Roth, and like I mentioned, those hand checks, they're starting to call him here in this basketball game, so uh, both teams are really going to have to keep their hands off, and for Otterbein, that could be a problem. Roth throws it into the low block to Featherloth, who goes up with a layup on the right side of the rim, can't get it to fall, but he is fouled, and he'll go to the charity stripe, and all by himself on the right side of the rim that time until Aaron Malley crashed in on him, and they'll get him for the foul. It will be his first, team's fourth of the half. Yeah, and that's the simplest play in basketball, David. It's a side out of bounds play where you stack four guys on the sideline as Fetheroff knocks down the free throw. You stack four guys on the sideline, and when everyone is on the ball, you have the guy that's down in the post front, and uh, and they just threw it right up over top, and Fetheroff was able to get the bucket, and now he knocks down both free throws. Fetheroff, two for two from the line as the freshman from Norwalk, Ohio, and it's a four-point lead for the visitors from Berea now. 24-20 with nine minutes to go in the first half. Finner has it high on the right side of the floor. Gets it near side wing to Chase Moyer. Moyer rifles it down low to Finner, who goes with a layup on the left side of the rim, and one. Grant gets it to fall. The shooters roll that time, and he'll go to the line to try to make it a one-point ball game. What a pass that was from Moyer to find him down low. Yeah, great pass, but not a great foul there by Brandon Gleam, as he really is going to go argue with the official but uh, not a good foul by him. Really was just trying to get out of the way of that one and not foul Grant Fenner, but a good job by Fenner of going into the
of the contact. Benner's first appearance at the charity stripe, and he misses it off the back crossbar. No good. It remains a two-point ball game as Gleam brings it left to right as we view them. Has it on the far side wing. Goaded by Chase Moyer. He'll back up his dribble. Sends it to Brandy near side wing against Christian Meister. Off of a screen from Dennis. Cutting towards the basket. Has it rejected away by Malley that time. And it's in the hands of Christian Meister who pushes it down the floor. Meister's looking to go 94 feet with it. No good. And it's swatted away by Roth out of his hands. Meister came down with it. But when he caught it, he was out of bounds. Yeah, and that's a play there. I don't think Christian Meister should have taken that. They didn't have numbers down the floor. And Trey Miller was also spotted up in the corner. He really needed to find Trey there. And maybe he would have knocked it down. Malley's going to check out of the game and be replaced by Marshall Crum again. Over in the far side corner, it's Dennis who looks to cut towards the hoop. He's at the free throw line. Kicks it out to Roth, far side wing. Cutting towards the basket. Rifles it down low to Dennis. And it's off of his hands. Picked up and saved by Featherloff on the right baseline. They feed it back out to Gleam. Top of the key. Shot clock down to 12 now. Gleam, NBA range three-pointer from the left wing. Is no good. Rattles in and out. And the rebound's pulled down by Grant Finner for the Tannen Cardinal. They'll feed it to Chase Moyer now. Trying to lob it down low to Marshall Crum. They do so. Crum in the low block. Turns, faces the basket, posts up, spins, goes with the layup, left rim, and he gets it to fall on Marshall Crum. Up to six points now in this game, and we're tied back up at 24 apiece. Marshall Crum has such nice post moves, and when he faces up, look out if you're Baldwin Wallace. Great job by Marshall Crum in the post. Brandy circles the three-point arc, picks up the ball in the low block, goes with an awkward shot, no good. Featherloff gets the rebound, goes up with a putback, it's no good as well. Tipped around, Finner gets it, and he'll send it to Miller, who brings it down the floor for Otterbein right to left. Miller into the low block, kicks it out to Meister far side wing, pump fakes a three-pointer, has it tipped away by Dennis, and it's stolen, and Gleam picks it up in the backcourt for Otterbein, their sixth turnover. Gleam tries to fire it down low, looking for Brandy, tipped out of bounds, though. I think Christian Meister got his right hand on it, it goes out of bounds, it'll remain with the Yellow Jackets on the right side of the floor. We'll see Jalen Hollinger, number 23, checking the game for the first time for the Yellow Jackets, and replace Jake Fetherloff. Hollinger, one of the other two players, along with Roth, who got ejected from the game the first time Otterbein played the Yellow Jackets because they both left the bench during that fight. We'll also see Jaron Crow check into the game for the Yellow Jackets, and he will place Brandon Gleam, who's been out on the floor for quite some time. Yeah, and Christian Meister might have wanted to pull that deep NBA three. He really has the confidence to do it. He probably should have done it The inbound it pass is intercepted away by Chase Moore, and they're fighting for the basketball on the floor, and it's finally picked up by Justin Roth, who gets a timeout as... Very feisty that time was Otterbein trying to defend that inbound pass, and Roth finally came up with it, and they get a timeout on the floor, all tied up at 24 apiece with 7.15 to go in the first half of yeah, our ball game. and that was a play right there, David, that Trey Miller read that ball beautifully at his hand in position to, on denying the pass, and he tipped it, and Chase Moyer just couldn't get to the floor before Justin Roth. Obviously, Justin Roth standing at 6'4", has a little bit longer arms than Chase Moyer, but like you mentioned, very solid job defensively on that uh, inbounds pass, and that's something that Otterbein really has not done very well this season is defending that baseline inbound. We saw Marietta get a lot of points off that, and we saw John Carroll on Wednesday do it. So Otterbein really did a good job on that possession of guarding the baseline. They're going to have to do it again, but we'll see what uh, Baldwin-Wallace drew up in the timeout off the sideline. All tied up at 24 apiece as both teams break their huddle. And the Yellow Jackets will inbound from the far sideline. They'll inbound it, guarding towards the basket is Roth. An awkward pass as he tries to get it into the far corner as he's falling down and it goes out of bounds. Not sure exactly what he was trying to do there, but it ended up in the hands of Dennis out of bounds on the right baseline. Well, he had Dennis wide open in the short corner, but as he was falling down, he looked like he just tried to throw that pass to Dennis and float it to him, and it just uh, went out of the reach of Matt Dennis there. All tied up at 24 apiece with seven minutes to go in the first half. Otterbein looking pretty sharp out there. It'll be their basketball on the left side of the floor. Finner has it near center circle for Otterbein where he's really being bothered by number 22, Jalen Hollinger. As he gets it to Miller at the free throw line, Miller picks up his dribble, gets it to Phyllis, top of the key, takes a jumper from the free throw line. It's off the backboard, no good, tipped around, and it ends up in the hands of Roth, who will bring it down the floor for the Yellow Jackets. Get it to Crow over on the far side wing. Hands it off behind him, cutting towards the basket is Brandy. Turns around in the key and gets a jumper to fall, and the Yellow Jackets up 26-24 now. Baldwin Wallace being very physical when they take it to the rim. Good penetration there by Zach Brandy. Miller near center circle. The former Eagle out of New Albany High School working opposite of Zach Brandy. Hands off to Phyllis behind him. Trying to go off of a screen from McEwen, or from, excuse me, Crum. Gets it to Moyer near side wing. Feeds it down low to Grant Finner into the low block. Finner posting up. Spins. 
Still holds the basketball. Gets it to Moyer, top of the key. Shot clock down to 10. Over to Phyllis on the far side wing. Phyllis backs up his dribble towards half court. Down to five. Jake looks like he wants to take it himself as he cuts into the lane. Goes up with a shot. Has it rejected by Dennis. And it's fed over to Roth, who brings it down the floor. To Crow at the free throw line. Max up his dribble towards the far side wing, where he's guarded by Jake Phyllis. 26-24, the Yellow Jackets on top of the Otterbein Cardinals. They get it to Dennis, near side wing, on the right side of the floor. Gets it to Hollinger, top of the key. Hollinger working against Grant Fenner as he tries to cut in towards the basket. Near side wing, three on the way from Crow is off the side of the rim, and Marshall Crum pulls down a tough rebound for Otterbein. Trailing by two with five and a half to go in the first half. Moyer has it far side corner for Otterbein as he goes off a screen from Crum. Pump fakes a three-pointer, gets it to Fenner, top of the key as Grant runs down the left side of the lane, picks up his dribble, tries to find Jake at the top of the key, does so, gets it to Miller, far side wing, picks up his dribble, feeds it to Crum in the low block, turnaround jumper, his shot is blocked by Dennis, and he doesn't even hit backboard. Yellow Jacket basketball, and it's intercepted away now by Miller, who looks to cut towards the hoop, goes up with a layup on the right side, and one as he is fouled in the action by number 25, Ryan Walsh, and Miller will go to the charity stripe and try to give Otterbein the lead again. Yeah, that was a good finish there by Trey Miller. There's a lot of contact, and he was able to put that one in and finish it. Two substitutions in the game for the Yellow Jackets. Number 30, Cameron Kuhn, one of the starters, and number 34, Reed Croson, the senior out of Jeromesville, Ohio, is making his first appearance of the ball game. And David, this is the first time I've seen the student section actually start a cheer uh, is what they were doing uh, earlier in the, in the possession, and that's something that we have not seen that yet this year. Miller uh, does not convert, so it remains tied at 26 apiece. Huge student section. As Elijah said, a lot of that has to do with a whole lot of high school students on campus today, but it's huge in the north side of the court. 26 all as they feed into the low block, and it's uh, try to bounce pass it down low to Reed Croson. Does number two... Crow, but it's just outside of the reach of his hands. Good defense by Marshall Crum that time, so it'll be the seventh Yellow Jacket turnover of the ball game. All tied up at 26 apiece. 4.44 to go in the first half as Miller brings it across center circle for Otterbein. Has it high on the right. Bounce passes it top of the key to Marshall Crum. Crum will send it over to Moyer, far side wing. Going off of a screen from Crum at the top of the key. Moyer still has it. Bounce passes it into the key to Grant Finner. Finner has his shot rejected uh, by number 25, Ryan Walsh, and it's picked up by Crow, who brings it down the floor for the Yellow Jackets now. Top of the key, Crow looks to cut towards the basket, kicks it back out, far side wing. Uh, Kuhn takes a jumper from the free throw line, is no good, and it goes a whistle and a foul, actually, as it looked like it went out of bounds off of the hands of a Yellow Jacket player, but before that, a whistle and a foul. And uh, they're going to call the foul. It's going to be on uh, Reed Cross. And, and so Grant Fenner's going to head to the one and one situation as Otterbein already in the bonus. Walton Wallace with eight fouls. But good job by Grant Fenner of boxing out and not allowing Reed Cross and the bigger guy to get in front of him and get position and get that offensive board. So Grant Fenner well deserving of these free throws. A one and one on the way from Fenner is off the back crossbar. No good. We remain tied at 26 apiece. Yellow Jacket basketball now on the right side of the floor. They get it to Brandy, top of the key, where he's guarded by Chase Moyer. Four minutes left to go in the first half. Kuhn has it at the right point, feeds it back to Croson, trying to fire it down low to Hollinger, where he's guarded on the right baseline by Miller. Goes up with a layup right side, no good. For the rebound there is Kuhn, no good as well. And it's pulled down by Grant Finner for Otterbein, who feeds it to Miller, who brings it down the floor right to left as we view though, as Coach Adrian yells out a play. This is a big possession for Otterbein. They need a bucket out of this possession or they need to take the lead at some point before Baldwin Wallace scores. Miller will feed it back to Phyllis near center circle. All tied up at 26 apiece. Jake looks to cut towards the left side of the key. Kicks it back out to Grant Fenner. Pump fakes a three-pointer as he drives into the lane. Goes up with a shot. No good. He hits the deck. A lot of contact. No foul. Rebound goes to Crow as he brings it down the floor for BW. They'll get it to Brandy, who looks to circle around the three-point arc. Into the low block. Has his shot rejected by Miller. Picks it up. Kicks it out. Three-pointer on the way. Far side wings. No good. They get their own rebound. Back out to Brandy. Sends it to Kuhn. Far side wing. Cuts towards the hoop. Goes up with an awkward shot underneath. No good, but a whistle and a foul. Wasted opportunity that time for the Cardinals as the Yellow Jackets were able to get a pair of offensive rebounds. Yeah, that's a good foul, though, there by Brian McKenzie because it was right before Kuhn was going towards the basket, and he had a wide-open layup if Brian McKenzie didn't grab him. So a good job by Brian McKenzie of picking up the hold, not allowing Kuhn to get the easy layup, and we'll see if Otterbein can stop uh, Baldwin-Wallace defensively and finish off this possession. McKenzie's first, team's fifth, as a quick inbound pass goes to Roth in the far side corner. 
Pump fakes the three-pointer working opposite of Christian Meister. They get it to Crow now, right point. Bounce passes to Dennis in the low block, posting up on Grant Finner. Sends it out to Kuhn, running along the right baseline. Underneath the hoop, picks up his dribble, goes up with a shot, and he gets it to fall over top of Chase. And Yellow Jackets back on top now, 28-26. And Coach Adrian is not happy right now with the referee as he thought that Kuhn had his uh, had his foot on the line. As Phyllis has a high side of the floor against Kuhn, he'll hand it off to Chase Moyer. Moyer off of a screen from Finner, circles around the three-point arc, sends it over on the far side corner. Slobs it down low to Grant Finner, working against Dennis. Finner still holding the basketball. Picks it up now in the low block. Goes up with a rebound and one. Grant Finner gets it to fall as they're going to get the foul on Dennis. And for Finner, that'll be his sixth point. Yeah, that's a great finish there by Grant Finner again. And he has really struggled from the floor in this basketball game, but that's a big bucket. If that gets his confidence going, he's yet to make a free throw here in this game. So we'll see if he can convert. This to give Otterbein the lead on its way, and it's good. In place of Matt Hughes, who's out with a shoulder injury, and he gives Otterbein the lead yet again. Back and forth we go, 29-28. Otterbein on top. That foul, as we said, was on Dennis. His second, team's ninth, so one more. And Otterbein shooting two the rest of the half. Game clock is down to 2:17. It'll be Crow on the far side of the floor now. He gets it to Featherloft, top of the point. Feeds it to Roth, who looks to cut towards the basket. And as he do, does so, he's tripped up over the legs of Christian Meister, and he hits the deck. And we'll have a foul on Meister. Yeah, and Roth really has had his way with Christian Meister when he's had that matchup, and uh, we'll see if Coach Adrian changes it up, but right now he's going to stick with Christian Meister on uh, Roth. And we'll see Marshall Crum, who's had a very nice first half, substituting the game, and he'll replace Grant That's going to let a long three-pointer fly after he makes the inbound catch. 29-28 as Phils cuts towards the lane, goes up with a shot, he hits the deck hard. Is that a yeah, and he's going to call an offensive foul oh on my. Jake Phyllis and say that he stretched out the arm. And, and uh, I, I just, I don't understand that. But that's a play where there's a lot of contact. Really, I think in all reality, they should have just let that one go. That was a play that Jake Phyllis missed the layup. That, that's just a play that I don't understand of calling anything and should really just have let that one go. Phyllis, his first foul team's seventh, and a guy you really can't lose out on the floor if your coach Adrian is your team's leading scorer, Jake Phyllis, but he pops right back up, and right now he's guarding Crow. Sends the far side wing, it looks to cut towards the basket. Has it now at the top of the key, back out to Crow. Three-pointer on the way, near side wing. Nothing but net for Crow as he knocks it down, and that is his first three-pointer of the game, and it gives BW the lead again, 31-29. Jake still looks a little slow out there on the floor as he brings it down the floor on the left side, guarded by Kuhn, far side wing, gets it to Moyer in the far side corner, who's being double teamed now, gets it to Phyllis, far side wing. Phyllis backs up his dribble now as he tries to regain composure, and I, when I say he hit the deck hard, I mean, he really hit that deck hard, and he still seems a little woozy out there. Shot clock down to 10 now. Phyllis, three-pointer on the way, far side wing with a hand in his face, no good. Crashing the board is Featherloff. He gets the rebound for BW, up top, on top, 31-29. Three-pointer on the way, Roth, top of the arc, and he knocks it down, and a smart timeout called by Coach Adrian as back-to-back three-pointers from the visiting Yellow Jackets, and they increase their lead 34-29, 61 seconds to go in the first half. I don't understand that shot selection there by Jake Phyllis. You have Marshall Crum down low, who's guarded there by a guard, and Jake Phyllis tries to go and pull up a three-pointer with Fethroth, who's a lot longer uh, than Cameron Kuhn, who was guarding him at the time. That's just not a, a great shot selection. And now Jake Phyllis, like you mentioned, he's a little woozy. And we'll see if he goes into a, a bit of concussion protocol here for Otterbein. And uh, it's, it's exactly what he's going to do. Yeah, he's certainly not going to return to the game as he's on the bench and the athletic staff is talking to him while the rest of the team is in the huddle with Coach Adrian. But a smart timeout right there by Coach Adrian as BW, the best three-point shooting team in the entire conference hits back-to-back -back three pointers to increase their lead 34 29 coach Adrian calls a timeout to talk over things with his defense yeah and uh, like we mentioned though David this is a game that Otterbein really isn't out of and uh, that's a good timeout by coach Adrian because even one bucket brings it back to a one possession game so really he, he's just trying to tell his team reiterate that yeah they hit those two big three pointers but we are far from out of this basketball you got you got to go into the locker room with so much some momentum though if you're the Otterbein Cardinals we've seen so many times in the past few weeks 
Otterbein has had close games at halftime and then they end up blowing it in the second half. Huge for the Cardinals here to try to come up with something in the final 61 seconds of this first half. Yeah, they really gotta find something offensively. They haven't found that guy that's really the go-to. For Baldwin-Wallace, it's been Justin Roth, obviously. He has 11 points in this game. For Otterbein, it's been a mixture of a lot of players. It's been Grant Fenner has had some production, Marshall Crum, uh, along with Jake Phyllis. So it's gonna be really, in my mind, something at the guard position. Otterbein has to figure out a way to get something going. And here's what Otterbein struggled with against Baldwin-Wallace the last time they played, the full court press. We resume play, and here's the press as McKenzie is in, uh, double teamed as he gets it to Meister down the floor, looks to cut towards the basket underneath on the right side, and they break the press nicely that time as they get a layup on the right side of the rim as Christian Meister gets his second bucket of the game and it's back to a three point ball game, 34-31, Otterbein trailing with 44 ticks to go in the first half. And they have it at the top of the key now to the Yellow Jackets. Roth looks to cut towards the basket. Fade away jumper from the elbow and he knocks it down and he's up to 13 points in this game, 36-31. For those of you who are wondering, Jake Phil still on the bench. It was Meister who replaced him at the guard spot. The athletic staff still taking a look at him. Otterbein trailing 31-36, Moyer has it far side wing now. About a second difference between shot and game clock as they bounce past it to Marshall Crum in the low block. Crum spins his way out of defensive pressure and gets the layup on the left side of the rim. Three point ball game yet again, 36, 33. Shot clock turned off, game clock down to 10 seconds as Crow has it near half court. Down to five seconds now as Crow looks to cut towards the basket. Fade away, jumper is no good. There for the rebound is Featherloft spins in and out, no good. And the buzzer sounds, thankfully that one didn't fall in. It's the halftime break and the cards Surprisingly, only trailing by three, 36, 33. As the players take a break, we'll take one with them. You're listening to Otterbein Basketball on the Otterbein Sports Radio Network, 97.5 WOBN. Don't go anywhere, we got a good one for you. Hey Westerville, did you know there is only one showcase on WOBN that features country music? I am talking about Campus Country. I'm here every Monday night at 8 playing the best country music. There's always time for country artist news, and on my show, you'll get to hear the newest songs and unreleased songs that you can't hear on those big stations. So tune into Campus Country every Monday night at 8 o'clock right here on your college radio station, 97.5 The Wild Card. WOBN 97.5 is your seat to Cardinal basketball this season. WOBN will have live coverage of 25 men's and women's basketball games. Be sure to tune in for the pregame show 15 minutes before tip-off and stay with us after the game for stats, analysis, and player and coach interviews. Check out WOBN.net for a complete broadcast schedule. Would your business survive a disaster? Nearly two-thirds of businesses aren't prepared for an emergency and 40% of businesses that experience a disaster never recover. Make an emergency plan now before it's too late. For a free online tool that helps you develop an emergency plan to keep your business up and running should disaster strike, visit ready.gov forward slash business. Brought to you by the Federal Emergency Management Agency, the American Red Cross, and the Ad Council. This is Marshall Crum, Senior Four on your Otterbein basketball team. And you're listening to Cardinal Basketball on 97.5 WOBN, Westerville, Ohio. Your source for Otterbein athletics. When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. One place on a full day. I want to be a bike that races around the country. I want to be a bench on a forest trail. When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. Brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. Today is Saturday. 60 minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. A message from USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. This presentation of Otterbein Basketball on the radio is brought to you by our sponsors. Ohio Health, Roush Honda, BMI Federal Credit Union, and Westerville Automotive. I used to be one of those irresponsible guys, always goofing off and acting like a real jerk. Girls wouldn't give me the time of day. Hey, Julie, do you have the time? Shut up. Then, 30 days before my 18th birthday, I went down to my local post office and registered with Selective Service overnight. 
I became aware of the man I had suddenly become, eligible for federal student loans, government jobs, and job training, responsible and mature. Hi, Julie. Dinner tonight? I'd love to, Brad. So register with Selective Service. It's what a man's got to do. Underbine trails by three as we have reached the halftime break here at the Reich Center. 36 33, our halftime score. I'm David Kinder, Elijah Gonzalez. Off to my right, and you're not only listening to Cardinal basketball, you're listening to the BMI Halftime Show, brought to you by BMI Federal Credit Union, open to everyone who lives, works, worships, or attends school in Franklin, Licking, Fairfield, Madison, Union, Delaware, or Morrow County. BMI Credit Union is federally insured by the National Credit Union Administration. Let's get you your halftime statistics first. For the visiting Yellow Jackets, 13 of 29 from the field, 44%. 7 of 13 on their three-pointers, 3 of 4 from the charity stripe. They have 20 rebounds, 8 on the offensive side of things. They've turned it over 7 times. For Otterbein, they're shooting 14 of 26 from the field, 53%. Just 0 for 3 from long range, 5 of 8 from the charity stripe. Uh, 12 rebounds for Otterbein, 3 offensively. They have also turned it over 7 times. No surprise leading the game in scoring right now is Justin Roth, the OAC's top scorer. He's got 13 points at the intermission, 5 of 6 from the field, 3 of 4 on long range shots. Right behind him in scoring for the Yellow Jackets with 5 is Cameron Kuhn. He's in second place. For Otterbein, Marshall Crump leading the way in scoring with 8 points after he came off the bench to replace an injured Mark McEwen in the final, her first few minutes of the game. Crump is 3 for 4 from the field and 2 for 2 from the charity stripe. Also leading the way in scoring for Otterbein is Grant Finner with seven, Jake Phyllis with five, Brian McKenzie has three, and Christian Meister has four. So, Elijah, you're trailing right now by three at the halftime break if you're Coach Adrian, but a pair of injuries in that first half, as we said, in the first few minutes of the game, Mark McEwen went down with an injury, could not put any pressure on that right knee, so I imagine we won't see him the rest of the game. Marshall Crum, though, came in right uh, immediately to replace him, and what a job Crum did. Yeah, Crum did a really good job, and it mostly came uh, because he was playing so well uh, in the interior uh, for Otterbein offensively. He came in and made an impact. He was facing up um, to the basket and making post moves. He had his back to the basket, made a couple of nice post moves. So Marshall Crum really, he was a guy that produced a lot at the end of the year last year for Otterbein and now this year doing the same thing towards the end of the season. Yeah, Crum the only senior on this Otterbein team and hasn't really seen a whole lot of playing time in the past few weeks. The past couple games hasn't got into them at all. We also talked about there was another injury right before uh, halftime, Elijah. Jake Phyllis running down the length of the floor, goes up on the layup on the left side, comes down, hits the deck hard. They end up calling him with the charge, and it looked like he hit his noggin on the hardwood floor there. He continued to play, but the next time out, he came out, and as you said, the training staff was looking at him, and it looked like it was concussion-like protocol, and we might not see Jake the rest of the way, which would be huge for the cards. Yeah, you know, I, I think that uh, he was just kind of shaken up a little bit. I'm not sure if he did in fact hit his head. I think he might have just hit the floor really hard and had a little bit of whiplash. I'm not really sure, uh, but we'll see if he comes out for the second half. But even if he does, I don't think he's going to be the same Jake Phillips that we saw at the beginning of that game anyway. Uh, but there's uh, just the guard play has not been there. It's really been uh, a struggle for Otterbein offensively. They've yet to make a three-pointer in this basketball game. They need to find production out of at least one of their guards if they want to continue to play with guys like Justin Roth and Jaron Crow. This is a Baldwin Wallace team that is guard heavy and really can play very well at that guard spot, and Otterbein has to match that. It's recruitment day here at Otterbein. Scholarship day, a whole lot of high schoolers on campus, and that's evident in the crowd here and by whatever band is performing right now on the court right now, doing a good job. And taking a look again at the BW statistics, if something you have to stop in the second half, if your coach Adrian has three pointers for BW. Coming into this game, we knew they were the league's best three point shooting team. They're seven of 13 right now at halftime intermission. You're gonna have to do a better job defending the long arm ball. Yeah, they uh, they really do. I mean, uh, this is again, a team in Baldwin Wallace that we mentioned was going to jack it up from deep. But I think if you look at one thing Otterbein really has to change, is uh, the production out of, Jer out of Justin Roth is going to be there? It's it's you know trying to cut the head of the snake, and it's a tough it's a tough task to do. But you look at Jaron Crow. He has one three-pointer in this game, but he's had three uh, opportunities and really has had three good looks. They've all been wide-open looks, and you can't allow that if you're Otterbein. You also have to continue 
to play very well on Cameron Kuhn, not allow him to pull it from, from beyond the arc. And uh, Zach Warner still cannot get off. He was a guy that had double digit points against them the first time they played. So Otterbein really just can't allow the role players of Baldwin Wallace to get involved in this basketball game. You're listening to the BMI Federal Credit Union Halftime Show. Otterbein trailing 36-33 at the halftime break. We're gonna take our second break of the halftime program. When we return though, we'll go around the conference give you the scores of all the other games in the OAC today as well as have the trivia question. You're listening to Cardinal Basketball on the Otterbein Sports Radio Network. 36-33, our halftime score. Keep it locked. As a referee, I pay attention for a living. While I'm busy watching the game, I need your help keeping an eye on the stands. If you see something that doesn't look quite right, tell a law enforcement official. We all play an important role in protecting our communities, and you can help. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. If you see something, say something is used with permission by the New York Metropolitan Transportation Authority. Hey, Cardinal fan. Otterbein Athletics on the radio is brought to you in part by Westerville Automotive. Serving the Westerville area for 20 years, they have two locations on Westerville Road and in the Uptown area, just seconds away from Otterbein on Main Street. They're on the web at westervilleautomotive.com. You can follow them on Facebook at Westerville Automotive Uptown or call them at 614-890-6700. That's Westerville Automotive. Hi, I'm Mark McEwen, junior forward on your Otterbein basketball team, and you're listening to Cardinal Basketball on 97.5 WOBN in Westerville, Ohio, your source for Otterbein athletics. Tuesday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m., join me, Shelby Snyder, for Shuffle Mode, only on WOBN 97.5. Shuffle Mode will provide the best music has to offer from the past, present, and any genre in between. Every week will be a new playlist with a new theme, only on WOBN 97.5 and streaming live anywhere in the world on WOBN.net. At the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Federal Student Aid, we provide more than $150 billion each year in grants, loans, and work-study funds, making higher education possible for anyone. Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more at studentaid.gov. For the thousands of wounded warriors returning from battle, Wounded Warrior Project has developed the Warriors to Work program, a unique program that helps wounded warriors translate their military experience to the civilian workplace. The Warriors to Work program also works with companies to find the right job for the right warrior. Contact Wounded Warrior Project at findwwp.org. Welcome home the brave. Welcome back to the Reich Center here in Westerville, Ohio. You're listening to Cardinal Basketball 97.5 WOBN. The Cards trailing 36-33 at the halftime break. I'm David Kinder, Elijah Gonzalez off to my left. As we've said throughout the entire game, a very big crowd here at the Reich Center and a very good student section because of all the high schoolers that are on campus. And it just has a nice feel in the gymnasium when there's this many fans in there. And the fact that it's a competitive ball game at halftime helps as well. Yeah, and uh, you know, normally we see the uh, the recruits and such head out about halftime if it's, uh, if it's a bit of a blowout, but a, a good game. And we've uh, still got a pretty decent crowd on hand here at the Reich Center and uh, Baldwin Wallace again has brought a pretty decent amount of fans too so uh, Otterbein hoping that uh, they can finish out this game the way they started it which was very well. Cards trying to break an eight game losing streak the last time Otterbein had a victory it was way back when they played Capital uh, in early January, January 7th to be exact in Bexley. Eight straight losses since then for Otterbein. 36-33, they're trailing at the halftime break. Let's go around the conference and give you the scores of the other games in the OAC today. As we said earlier, all of them were 3 o'clock tip off so they're all over by now. And University Heights, John Carroll barely beat Capital 65-63 down on the Ohio River. Marietta remains undefeated with an 85-75 victory over Wilmington. Uh, Mount Union gets it done on the road at Ada, taking on the Polar Bears. They went 86-79, and Heidelberg beats Muskingum today in New Concord, 93-87. As we said, the other 3 o'clock game of interest today, the Lady Cardinals suffer a very tough loss, 70 68 to the Lady Yellow Jackets, despite being up 44-34 at the halftime break. Amari Huck, 19 points 
in that game for the Otterbein Cardinals. Yeah, that's uh, that was a, definitely a tough loss, and uh, for uh, Coach Richardson's team, it probably knocks them out of OAC tournament contention. So that is, uh, again, a tough loss, but they do have four home games coming up in a row, David, and I think that really that could uh, be a stretch where we see uh, that uh, Lady Cardinals team come up and win a few games down the stretch. And for the men's team, you got to imagine if you can hold on and win this one. We thought they were right out of the conference tournament picture, but a win today would put you right back in the hunt. Yeah, it really, it really would. Uh, I mean, they'd still have some work to do and still have to have some things happen, but that is definitely something that if they can find a way to win this game, they uh, they could put themselves in a possibility of, of getting back in that OAC uh, tournament in that ace spot. It's time now for our halftime trivia question with about a minute to go before the second half tips off here from the right center. What two teams have combined to play the most games against each other in Division I college basketball history? Your options, A, Indiana Purdue, B, Oregon, Oregon State, C, Kansas, Missouri, or is it D, Columbia and Penn? If you think okay. you have an answer to today's trivia question, you can tweet in at WOBN. That's at WOBN on Twitter, or you can text into the program if you get it right. We'll give you a shout-out on the air and a free WOBN T-shirt. Elijah, I think you got the last trivia question correct, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. I'm not getting this one right, David. Yeah, you got a 25% chance if you're just guessing. But, again, your options were A, Indiana, Purdue, B, Oregon, Oregon State, C, Kansas, Missouri, or D, Columbia, Penn. The question again, what two teams have combined to play the most games in D1 college basketball history? As always, we'll give you the answer to our trivia question during the first time out of the second half, whenever that may be. Now, in that John Carroll game on Wednesday, there were no timeouts in the second half, so we kind of had to squeeze it in during a free throw. This game much more competitive. I imagine there'll be a timeout somewhere in there. Yeah, this uh, there'll probably be a timeout, not only uh, just to stop the clock, but also there'll be some stoppages in uh, in play and timeouts because uh, I feel like this game going to get a little bit chippy if uh, it starts to, to get back uh, going and uh, really be a competitive basketball game. So for Baldwin, will inbound on the far sideline. It'll be Cameron Kuhn, and he'll inbound to Jaron Crow for the Yellow Jackets. Chase Moyer will be guarding Crow as he backs up. On the floor for Otterbein, it's Moyer, McKenzie, Miller, Crum, and Fenner. So Jake Phyllis not in the lineup here to start the second half as Crow has it, dribbles left baseline, now kicks it out to Roth, a three, it's short off the front rim. Rebound goes to Marshall Crum and he pushes quickly to Trey Miller. Miller brings it across the time stripe, will set up the offense high on the left for the Cardinals. Gives it off to Chase Moyer on the far side wing. Waiting for a screen from Crum, now gets it, comes off the screen. Dribbles it back, goes inside to Marshall Crum. He lost control of it, puts it on the floor, spins with the bat, with the drop step, tried to kick it back out to Miller. It's taken away, and Matt Dennis going down the floor, looking to go up on the right side of the rim, and it's stripped away by Chase Moyer, and a foul is called. Now, that's an interesting call there by both officials as really he was stripped away. looked pretty clean from up here with 9.21 to go, and Matt Dennis to try and make this game a five-point game. Throws. That'll be Moyer's second of the game. Probably a smart foul, though, by Chase Moyer as Dennis had a clear path to the basket and could have had an easy layup, and now Moyer's going to make him earn him as he misses the first one off the back crossbar. So Matt Dennis misses the first free throw for Baldwin Wallace. It's Dennis, Kuhn, along with Fetheroff and Crow, as well as Roth on the floor. Matt Dennis misses the second free throw. It's tipped away by Fetheroff, but goes into the hands of Grant Fenner for Otterbein. Miller will set up the offense. He brings it across the time strike. Waits for a screen from Fenner. Now penetrates in the lane. Left side of the hoop goes up and puts it in. Great finish there by Trey Miller. And Miller with just two points at the halftime break. A great job that time. Take control of the game. Just cutting towards the hoop and fighting through a double team and getting the layup. Top of the key with Swift Fetheroff. Now goes to Dennis on the near side. Now back to, to Kuhn at the top of the key. He comes off a screen. Has it right point. Penetrates in the lane. Goes up left side of the rim. No contest and he knocks it down. And it's now 38-35. A three point game with 18-45 and counting. Bad defense out of the cards that time. Just let him drive right to the rack. Daryl Miller the third. Guarded by Roth. Goes into the high post to Marshall Krupp. Kicks it now off a fader screen to Miller, who goes inside on the right block to Crum. Crum spins, kicks it back out. Open three, Trey Miller near side wing. Bang, got it. Big shot there by Trey Miller, and it's all tied up at 38 with 18-23 and counting. Otterbein's first three-point field goal made of the game. Top of the key, it's with Crow, guarded by Chase Moyer. He swings it to Fetheroff, a jumper from the far side wing. No good. Rebound is tipped off the hands of Chase Moyer as he couldn't corral it 
And Otterbein will have to sit down and play defensively for another 35. Yeah, that's really unfortunate for Otterbein as Moyer had that rebound all by himself, just bobbled it and kicked it out of bounds. Roth inbounds it to Crow at the right point. He's guarded there by Chase Moyer. Crow now dribbling with his left hand. Waits for a screen, turns it down, penetrates in the lane, goes up on the right side of the hoop. No good. Rebound to Grant Fenner. Fenner gets it up the floor to Daryl Miller the third, who pushes for Otterbein. Now he's looking to penetrate, goes inside to Crum on the left block. Crum spins, still spinning, and offensive foul, as they're going to say he hooked him. So Marshall Crum will pick up the foul here. That's exactly what they'll call, and they'll say he swung the elbow on the hook. That'll be Crum's first of the game, team second of the half, and these officials showing they're not afraid to call offensive fouls. That's already the fifth offensive foul called against the Cardinals in this game. Crow will bring it across the time stripe high on the right here for Baldwin Wallace as he's guarded by Chase Moyer. 17-42 and counting. They go to Matt Dennis now on the near side wing who's guarded by Fenner. He comes off a screen, now goes inside to Fetheroff who set the screen on the left block. Fetheroff kicks it back out to Kuhn on the near side. Guarded by Brian McKenzie. Kuhn looking to penetrate. Now he's in the near side corner, now penetrates in the lane. Struck away by Chase Moyer and he gets the steal. Moyer now pushing for Otterbein as they have some numbers. Moyer. Goes and fakes the pull-up jumper. Now kicks inside Marshall Crum, and he puts it up and in on the left block. And Otterbein has the lead, a two-point lead for the Cardinals. Marshall Crum now with 10 points in this game, four or five from the field. The only Cardinal in double figures. Roth looking to penetrate in the middle of the lane. It's stripped away, and the foul is going to be called on Trey Miller. So he'll pick up the foul, and Roth will head to the charity stripe as Trey Miller tried to strip it away, and that's going to be his second foul and the team's third of the half. And now we're going to see something that we don't normally see. Troy Phelps is going to check into the game for Otterbein along with Aaron Malley. So Roth at the charity stripe, and he has yet to be there today. He's been very good from beyond the arc, but he knocks down the free throw. Yeah, and on the season, he's a pretty good free throw shooter as well. 83%, 70 of 84 coming into this game from the charity stripe. Troy Phelps and Aaron Malley check in. Marshall Crum and Grant Fenner are the ones that are subbed out. And now Roth looking to put up the free throw. It's up and no good. And the rebound goes to Troy Phelps. And for Roth, he has 14 points in this basketball game, which is what he had the last time before he got kicked out of the game against Soderbein. Now it's Trey Miller looking for a screen. Comes off one from Aaron Malley. Gives it to Malley at the top of the key. Guarded by Matt Dennis. Now dribbles over near side wing. Gives it off. Chase Moyer, three near side wing. Off the backboard and nothing else. No good. Rebound goes to Kuhn and he'll bring it up the floor here for Baldwin Wallace. Otterbein still with the one point lead. Kuhn looking to penetrate. Goes with the pull up jumper in the lane. Got it to go. Big shot there by Cameron Kuhn. And it's now 41-40 in favor of Baldwin Wallace. Trey Miller the third. Now guarded there by Roth. Gives it off to Moyer on the near side wing. Waits for a screen from Phelps. Now gives it off to Miller in the near side corner. Three on the way. Got it to go. Big shot by Trey Miller, and it's a two-point lead again for the Cardinals. Miller with just two points at halftime. He's got uh, seven now here in the second half. It's now Moyer guarding Crow as he backs up near the center circle. Gives it off on the far side to Roth. Now top of the key with Fetheroff. They swing it around to the near side wing with Dennis. Now to Roth at the left point. Three on the way. Got it. Big shot there by Justin Roth. And it's now a one-point lead again for Baldwin Wallace. Back and forth we go here at the Reich Center. Gives it off to Brian McKenzie, near side wing, guarded by Cameron Kuhn. Waits for a screen from Phelps. Now comes off the screen, gives it to Malley, left point. Malley hands off to Chase Moyer. Has it near side wing, looking to penetrate. Goes with a behind the back pass in the lane to Aaron Malley. He puts it up, no good. Rebound tipped around, put in the hands of Aaron Malley. He goes up and puts it in on the right side of the rim. Big finish by Aaron Malley and Otterbein back ahead by one. It's now Jaron Crow bringing it across here for Baldwin Wallace, guarded by Chase Moyer high on the right. Waiting for a screen, now gives it off to Roth on the far side. Gives it to Dennis, top of the key. They swing it around. It's with Fetheroff on the near side. Fetheroff back top of the key with Dennis. Dennis looking to penetrate on Phelps. He goes up. It's no good. Rebound tipped around in the hands of Fetheroff. He puts it up. No good. Tipped by Dennis, but it's going to go off the hands of Troy Phelps. And it'll stay with the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets as Warner checks into the game for Matt Dennis, who looks to be a little bit shaken up. Yeah, as he heads off the floor. Yeah, the ball went off Phelps that time, but great defense by him that entire possession, uh, defending his territory down low. Inbounding from the far side baseline is Jaron Crow. He's looking to inbound, can't find anybody. Now gets it to Fetheroff, who hands off to Roth. An open three, no good. Rebound goes to Trey Miller as he pushes for Otterbein. 
Miller gets it to Chase Moyer near side wing. Pump fakes a three, now goes with the, the pull-up jumper. It's no good. Tipped around and goes into the hands of Chase Moyer on the offensive glass and gets it to Trey Miller right at Cardi's chest at midcourt. And he'll set up the offense with 14-40 and counting. One-point lead for Otterbein. Troy Phelps sets a screen for Brian McKenzie, but he turns it down, penetrates right baseline, and it's going to be a foul that's going to be called. It's going to be the first of the half for Baldwin-Wallace. And I believe it's going to go against Justin Roth as we wait to see if it will, and it will, so it'll be his second personal. Coach Adrian giving some lessons to his young freshman forwards that are in the game right now. Again, Aaron Malley and Troy Phelps are the forwards that are in the game for Otterbein. They inbound to Daryl Miller the third up near center circle, guarded by Jaron Crow. They give it to Chase Moyer on the far side wing. He penetrates the lane, goes to inside to Phelps on the left block. Phelps dribbles it back out, has nowhere to go with it, picks up his dribble, now hands off to Chase Moyer on the far side corner. Moyer looking to penetrate on the left baseline, gets it to Phelps. Phelps bobbled it, gets it back, goes with the pull-up jumper. It's no good off the backboard and rim, and the rebound goes to Jaron Crow. Still a one-point lead for Otterbein, but Justin Roth trying to change that with a three from the right point. It's no good. Rebound battled for and tipped out of the hands of Ryan Walsh, who has checked into the game for Baldwin-Wallace, and Otterbein will get possession back as Gleam will also check in. Justin Roth will head to the bench where he does not normally play does not normally sit on the bench very much. And another great job defensively that time by Phelps. He didn't come away with the rebound, but he did a good adjo enough job down low fighting for it that it was tipped around, and BW can't come up with control of it, and it'll be Cardinal basketball. For Trey Miller, it's 10 points now. He has eight here in the second half. And for Marshall Crum, he has 10. But besides that, Baldwin Wallace only with Justin Roth with 17. Everybody else still in single digits. Aaron Malley, left point, has it, gives it off to Brian McKenzie at the right point. McKenzie, guarded by Kuhn, waits for a screen, now comes off of it. McKenzie dribbles around the arc and gives it to Christian Meister on the far side wing. Meister, double team there as he picks up his dribble. Gives to Trey Miller at the top of the key. A three for Miller! Oh, and it rolls in and out, and the rebound goes to Ryan Walsh, and Gleam will get the ball and push it up the floor for Baldwin Wallace up the left side. Gleam, guarded by Christian Meister, comes off a screen, now has it top of the key. Looking to penetrate, kicks it back out to Kuhn on the far side. Kuhn goes with the pull-up jumper just inside the arc, got it to go. Big shot by Cameron Kuhn, it's a one-point game now, 13-15 and counting. Yeah, and Coach Adrian's going to send uh, Finner and Crum back to the scorer's table to check in. They got a nice little breather, but they're needed out on the floor right now. Brian McKenzie now has it on the near side wing. Have yet to see Jake Phyllis here in the second half. Christian Meister has it left point. Has nowhere to go with it and gives it top of the key to Trey Miller. Guarded there by Gleam. They give it to Brian McKenzie on the near on the far side wing, and it's going to be a block that is called on Cameron Kuhn. He can't believe it as he thought Brian McKenzie pushed off there, but yeah. Kuhn, in my opinion, initiated the contact. Well, I'm not sure. I, I thought I agreed with uh, Kuhn that time, too. It looked like he got a little bit of an extension with his left arm that time, did McKenzie. But, hey, the Cardinals are going to take it. And like we said, we're going to see Crum and Finner substituted back in the game at the forward spot to replace Malley and Phelps. But what a job they did in their absence. That's Kuhn's second foul in the team's second of the half. 33 seconds now on the shot clock as they go into the high post with Grant Fenner on the right side. Fenner guarded there by Warner. Has nowhere to go with it as he picks up his dribble. Gives it to Brian McKenzie. McKenzie back to Fenner at the top of the key. Gives it to Trey Miller at the left point. Miller dribbles down low and goes inside to Crum in the short corner on the left side. Crum fakes a couple of times, now goes with the spin, kicks it back out, Brian McKenzie top of the key. McKenzie looking to penetrate. He goes up left side of the rim, it's blocked by Ryan Walsh and grabbed by Ryan Walsh and a foul. Now they're gonna oh, call travel. the travel. Ryan Walsh was bumped there by Brian McKenzie, thought they were gonna whistle him for a foul, but instead they whistled the travel on Ryan Walsh. 12.22 to go here in this basketball game and it's a one point game. And Baldwin Wallace with the lead. Yeah, both teams, that's just the ninth uh, turnover of the game for BW. Both teams with nine now. Both teams doing a very good job not turning the ball over. Ottermine looking to get it in bounds. They get it into Christian Meister on the far side wing. Meister comes off a screen from Marshall Crum. Guarded there by Crow. They go inside to Crum now as he faces up. Looks to penetrate. Kicks it back out. Meister, a three from the left point. Is short off the front rim, and a foul is going to be called. And it's going to stay with the Cardinals. And I, again, it's going to go on Ryan Walsh. So two mistakes. He has the travel and then a hook there by Ryan Walsh. And with 12 12 to go, Otterbein gets another 35. Now yeah, that's going to be the. Uh, well, they got on the scoreboard right now that it's on Zach Warner. Well, they're going to Warner then as that's who they're going to call it on as they get Christian Meister. He goes with a jump. Short corner, it's no good. Round goes to Walsh, who gets it to Crow, and they push quickly. Baldwin Wallace does. Crow now has it at the uh, left wing, and he's guarded there by Trey Miller. 
Crow dribbling around now, gets to the top of the key. Comes off a screen, looking to penetrate, kicks it out. Gleam open three from the far side corner, no good. Rebound goes to Brian McKenzie and gives it to Trey Miller. Miller pushing, gets it to Meister and they go back to Miller, up high on the left. Now it goes back to Meister. They go inside to Crum on the left block. Crum fakes the kick out, now looking to spin, now kicks it back out. They swing it to Trey Miller on the near side wing. He comes off the screen, offensive foul on Marshall Crum. So Crum sets the screen and picks up the offensive foul as Gleam was trying to fight through it. 11.33 to go, and Marshall Crum will pick up the fourth team foul of the game for the, of the half for the Cardinals. And the second foul on Marshall Crum, a full timeout. It's going to be taken here by head coach Todd Adrian, and that gives us time to answer the trivia question. In case you missed it, what two teams have combined to play the most games in Division I college basketball history? Is it A, Indiana, Purdue, B, Oregon, Oregon State, C, Kansas, Missouri, D, Columbia, Penn? A lot of these uh, teams known more for their football rivalries, but let's see what uh, Elijah's answer is. I'm going to go with uh, Indiana, Purdue. You're going to go Indiana and Purdue. In football, they play for the old Oaken Bucket. In basketball, they play for nothing, and they're also not the answer to today's trivia question. Good. The correct answer is B, Oregon, Oregon State. The Ducks and the Beavers play in the Civil War. They played 342 games entering this year. They first met in 1903 and have played 50 more games than the team that's in second place on the list. So the Ducks and the Beavers with a long history. And Elijah with a long history of losing trivia questions. Yeah, that's uh, that's what I do. Uh, <laughs> I told you I wouldn't get it right. So 11.33 to go here. We had a great basketball game on hand for you as Baldwin Wallace with the one-point advantage, 46-45. Marshall Crump picked up his second foul before the timeout was called by head coach Todd Adrian. And you got to love the way Otterbein's responding in this game, Elijah. We talked at halftime so many times this year. Otterbein has played very close up until halftime, and then in the second half, they just lose momentum and end up getting blown out. So far in this game, not the case, despite all the problems that they faced. Within the first minute, Mark McEwen, one of your starting forwards, goes down with a right knee injury, it looked like. He can't go back in the game. Marshall Crum comes in, and he seems to have a very good game. He's up to 10 points already. Right before halftime, Jake Phillips hits the deck hard. Maybe a possible concussion or something for Phillips, but we haven't seen him at all in this game, so you're playing without your leading score, and Otterbein just continues to chug right on without their two better players out on the floor. 11.33 as the clock starts moving. Gleam brings it across the time stripe. Gives it to Roth, who has it now top of the key. He swings to Warner in the corner, far side. No good off the front rim. Rebound goes to Trey Miller, and he'll push for Otterbein as he brings it across the time stripe. Miller has it high on the right. Setting up the play now for Otterbein as he waits for a screen. Comes off one from Grant Fenner. Gives it to Fenner at the top of the key. He steps just inside the arc. No good off the back rim. Rebound goes to Gleam. And Gleam will pull it down and run the show here for Baldwin Wallace as he looks to penetrate and he's fouled by Christian Meister. It's the second time Meister has tripped somebody heading to the rack. That's going to be the fourth team foul. It's going to go fifth actually on Otterbein. It's the third on Christian Meister. So the foul situation not plaguing Otterbein just yet as Warner has it at the right point. Now penetrates, goes up with a jumper in the lane. It's in and out. And the rebound goes to Brian McKenzie. Otterbein dodged a bullet there. They get it to Brian McKenzie now on the far side wing as he tried to look inside to Marshall Crum in the left block but couldn't get it there and gets it back to Trey Miller. Miller gives it off to Meister on the near side wing. Waits for a screen now. Gives it to Miller in the near side corner. Miller trapped in the corner and it's taken away by Gleam. Here goes Gleam pushing quickly. He has numbers. Gets it inside to Zach Brandy. Brandy spins. Kicks it back out to Gleam. Far side corner. Three and it rolls in and out. Tipped to Brandy who is going to bring it back out. Kick it out to Warner. A three from the near side wing is going out as it hits the front rim. Looked like it was going to fall in but instead it falls just long and it's now 10-10 to go and it's been back and forth but no buckets for either side. Miller penetrates on the right side of the rim. He goes up and he gets swatted there by Warner as he came over on the help side, D. And Walsh will check out. Checking in is the Matt Dennis, who has been a very athletic presence down low so far this year for Baldwin Wallace. As he checks into the game, Trey Miller looking inbound, gets it to Fenner, short corner, jumper, oh. it's no good, but he's fouled as it rolled in and out. And Grant Fenner will head to the charity stripe for Otterbein. Yeah, Fenner just one of three from the charity stripe in this game. He missed his first two. He ended up converting on one after making a basket, and he wasn't too far from making that shot right there. Just barely missed it.
Grant Fenner puts up the first free throw. It's up and good. So that's going to add his eighth point of this contest. Again for Otterbein, it's been Marshall Crum and Trey Miller leading the way with 10 points. For Fenner, the second free throw is up and good. And Otterbein back in front with 10.04 to go. As the clock begins to tick, it'll probably be the longest 10.04 for Otterbein as they have the lead, something they haven't had in a while. It's now near side wing. He gets top of the key to Roth. Roth now penetrates after the pump fake, and he's fouled before the shot. And Coach Adrian trying to get the most out of his guys defensively. Didn't like what he saw in that possession. That's going to be the third on Trey Miller and the sixth team foul. So the next one will put Baldwin Wallace in the bonus. They tried to go inside to Zach Brandy, but they can't. Gleam has nowhere to go with it and gets it to Warner up high on the right. Gives it back to Gleam on the far side wing. Gleam now looking to penetrate. Kicks it back out. Matt Dennis, jumper just inside the arc. Got it. Big shot by Matt Dennis. And it's now a one-point advantage for Baldwin Wallace. All like a prize fight. One punch, got to take another. As Trey Miller has it, comes off a screen from Grant Fenner on the far side, gives it to Fenner at the top of the key. Fenner looking to penetrate on the right side of the rim. Goes up and one for Grant Fenner. What a finish as he had the ball down by his hip, but somehow brought it up and was able to put it in the bucket, and he's looking to give Otterbein the two-point lead. And with that, Fenner leads all Cardinal scores now. He's up to 11 in this ball game, and Fenner coming up with some very clutch shots in this basketball game for Otterbein. And he has a chance to give him a two-point lead. As you said, Elijah, it's been like a prize fight. Otterbein hasn't really been able to get more than a one-point lead going here in this basketball game. Finner with a huge opportunity to do just that right here. Warner checks out. Jalen Hollinger checks in for Baldwin Wallace. The first the free throw for Fenner is up and good. For Otterbein, Chase Moyer checks in, and Trey Miller checks out. So Jake Phyllis on the bench for more than likely a concussion. As now Zach Brandy has it top of the key. Looking to penetrate, dribbles it back out. He has it on the near side wing. Now gives off right point to Gleam, who dribbles it now. He has it in his right hand. Goes between his legs with the crossover now. Puts up the jumper, and it's no good in and out. Oh. Rebound tipped around and goes right in the hands. Hollinger, he missed the layup. He blew the layup. Marshall Crum got it to Fenner, and now it's with Christian Meister who will slow it down for Otterbein. 8.54 and counting as Meister comes off a screen from Fenner. They give it to Fenner at the top of the key. He has it there, guarded by Hollinger. Hands it off now to Chase Moyer. Moyer has it right point. Gives it to McKenzie in the far side corner. Now back out to Meister. Looking for a screen from Crum. Gets it. Goes to Fenner at the top of the key. Fenner looking to penetrate. Kicks it out. Chase Moyer. Three from the right point. It's on the way. It's short off the front rim. Rebound goes in the hands of Zach Brandy. And he'll push it for Baldwin Wallace. Has it now. And he penetrates left side of the rim. Goes up and puts it in. Big finish there by Zach Brandy. Roll knotted up. Back at 50. And 8.20 and counting on the clock. And we got a good basketball game for you here. Christian Meister dribbles it across Cardi's chest right at midcourt. He goes into the high post to Fenner, who goes inside to Moyer, who puts it up on the left side of the rim and in. Big bucket by Chase Moyer as he lost the ball on the right side, but got it back and put it up on the left. Moyer's first points of the ball game, and they couldn't come at a bigger time for Ottermine. Brandy at the top of the key, gives it to Hollinger on the near side wing, guarded by Fenner, looking to penetrate. Double team there. Oh. They go inside to a wide open. Matt Dennis, who missed oh. the layup, missed the tip back. Now he goes up a third time and gets it to go. 52 all, and Matt Dennis just about blew the easiest layup that Baldwin Wallace has had all game long. As now Christian Meister bringing it across the time stripe with 7.35 and counting, and we're all tied at 52. Into the high post with Grant Fenner. Looking to hand it off now to Meister, he does. Comes back off a screen from Meister. Gives it to Chase Moyer on the near side wing. Now goes into the short corner with Grant Fenner, guarded by Hollinger. Fenner is fouled as he's heading to, towards the basket as Hollinger going to get called for the hand check here. That's going to be the sixth team foul, so either way, the next foul. And we're seeing another two and two substitution as Marshall Crum and Grant Fenner check out of the game and checking in is Troy Phelps and Aaron Malley. Yeah, and Phelps and Malley did a good job last time they were in there holding their own while Fenner and Crum could take a breather out on the bench. We'll see how they do the second time out there on the floor. The Can't find anybody, tried to go inside to McKenzie who got the ball somehow and now gets it to Christian Meister on the left point. Meister now gives off to Brian McKenzie on the far side wing. McKenzie waiting for a screen from Troy Phelps. Gets one. Looks to penetrate in the lane. Kicks it out to Aaron Malley on the right point. Hands it off to Christian Meister's double team there. Meister looking to penetrate. Goes with the step back jumper. Big bucket by Christian Meister off the step back at the top of the key. And it's now 54-52 as Otterbein gets the lead back. Crow 
Gives it off now to Brandy at the top of the key. It's with Matt Dennis on the near side wing. He penetrates, goes inside. A charge was not called, and Brandy knocks down the jumper as Brian McKenzie tried to take the charge on Matt Dennis, but they let it go. And now it's 6.40 and counting on the clock. Otterbein gets the basketball back with the game all tied at 54. Meister waiting for a screen and comes off one from Aaron Malley. Didn't really do much and now goes into the far side corner. Back out to Meister on the far side wing. Phelps comes with the screen. Now gives to Moyer who goes inside to Troy Phelps and it's a block that's going to be called on Jalen Hollinger. And it's going to be two shots here for Troy Phelps. And he will head to the charity stripe for the first time in his college career, I believe. It is indeed, and coming into this game, only eight points all season long for Phelps. And this is a big time pressure moment right now for him. This to give Otterbein the lead with a huge crowd and a big time game. Otterbein really needs to win. A lot of pressure on the freshman right here. 6.22, the clock is stopped as Phelps puts up the first free throw and it falls in. Big shot there by Troy Phelps, who picks up the first points of the game for him. He has one rebound is the only other statistic that he has. And just his ninth point on the 2014-2015 season. So Phelps lines it up yet again and puts it up. And it's off the back rim, rolls around and goes in. Troy Phelps, oh. two free throws that just rattled around. Looked like they weren't going to fall, and they do. And now it's Crow who brings it across the time stripe, guarded by Meister. Gives it off to Roth on the left point. And now he pulls up for three, guarded by Moyer. It goes in and out, and the rebound goes to Christian Meister. Meister now pushing for Otterbein. Gets to Brian McKenzie. McKenzie in the near side corner. Now looking to penetrate on the right baseline. Pulls his dribble up, and now gives off to Aaron Malley on the right wing. Back to Christian Meister now. Meister goes into the near side corner with McKenzie. Back out to Meister. Now goes far side wing with Chase Moyer, guarded there by Jalen Hollinger. Mo Moyer looking to penetrate. Comes off a screen now from Aaron Malley. Oh, 10 seconds on the shot clock as Meister pulls a three for the near side wing and knocks it down. Huge shot by Christian Meister, five point game. Now Otterbein in the lead, timeout. Baldwin Wallace, and that is huge for Otterbein. 5.35 to go, 59-54. What a game for Otterbein with all the struggles they faced in this game and in the past few games. They come into this one and it's not far from over, but a huge lead right now, 59-54 for the Cards, a huge shot. Knocked down right there, and we're seeing an intensity out of Otterbein that I have not seen since the Capitol game, and I don't know if the crowd has anything to do with it. The crowd at that Capitol game was huge as well. Granted, at the Capitol game, they're against Otterbein, but this is the first big crowd we've seen at the Reich Center in a couple of games, and Otterbein really feeding off of it, and the first time we've seen a whole lot of intensity out of the card since that Cap game. Yeah, that was a huge shot also by Christian Meister, an NBA range three from the near side wing. And David, amazingly, Otterbein doing this without Jake Phyllis. And not only Jake Phyllis, but also Mark McEwen, one of their better forward players who went down in the first few minutes of this game. But Phyllis, yeah, Phyllis, the leading scorer on this team who at times really has a knack of taking over ball games, just cutting towards the hoop and making shots for himself. He's still on the bench and he was a little bit woozy after he hit the deck. I don't imagine we'll see him the rest of the game and the reserves proving that they don't need to. They're doing a very good job for my money so far. Uh, Marshall Crum, probably give him the MVP as well as Grant Finner. Finner up to 12 points. Both have had clutch shots in this game. Mark McEwen sitting on the end of the bench in a t-shirt as he's changed out of his uniform and hoping for the best news for Grant Fenner and or excuse me for Mark McEwen and David not only are they missing Mark McEwen they're missing Matt Hughes they're also missing Clayton, Clayton Schaefer, Schaefer who are three big guys that have really played a ton of minutes for Otterbein this year. Otterbein's played about two games this year where all their starters were healthy I mean they're used to battling through adversity like this. So now on the right point it's with Jaron Crow. He comes off a screen from Fetheroff. Looking to penetrate now. Guarded by Aaron Malley. He pulls it back out. Has it now on the near side wing as he dribbles with it. Guarding there is, is Crow. And they switch back now. They go to the top of the key to Cameron Kuhn who penetrates. Kicks it out. Jalen Hollinger pump fakes a three. Penetrates in the lane. Goes up with the left hand and puts it up and in. Big shot by Jalen Hollinger to bring it back to a one possession game. 5.07 and counting on the clock here at the Reich Center. And Otterbein surprisingly with the three point lead. Meister coming off a screen from Phelps, decides to turn it down and come off the one from Aaron Malley on the right elbow. Gives it to Malley now at the top of the key, who's guarded there by Hollinger. 16 on the shot clock. Hands it off to Chase Moyer at the left point. Moyer penetrating in the lane, goes to Meister on the back door. Now to Phelps, a jumper from the short corner, no good off the back rim. And the rebound to Justin Roth. 440 and counting now on the clock as it ticks down. Crow looking to penetrate. Now pulls it back out. 
has it on the near side wing. Now resetting the offense here as he's guarded by Meister. Comes off a screen, has it, kicks it to Kuhn in the near side corner, guarded by Brian McKenzie. Kuhn looking to penetrate. Goes up inside on Brian McKenzie. Goes up and puts it in. Big shot, and that was a nice one move there by Cameron Kuhn to get inside. It's a one-point game now. So four straight points for Baldwin-Wallace, and the comeback is on. As now Brian McKenzie, guarded there by Cameron Kuhn, gets the top of the key to Chase Moyer. Moyer with it there, gives the Meister on the near side wing. He's guarded tightly by Roth. Tried to go inside, it's stolen away by Fetheroth. And now Roth will bring it up the floor here for Baldwin-Wallace. Gives to Crow, a pull-up three from the far side wing is no good off the back rim. Rebound to Cameron Kuhn, who now looks to penetrate on the right side of the rim. He goes up, he's fouled, and one. And one for Cameron Kuhn, and he puts it up and in. That's a huge bucket as it gives Baldwin Wallace back the lead. Yeah, and he just kind of threw that one up at the hoop as he was falling down, and luckily for him, it fell in. And yeah, a huge shot that time for BW, as you said. And Coach Adrian's going to send Finner and Crum back into the game now and see what they can do. They're going to get the foul on Malley. That'll be his second, team seventh. So Trey Miller, Marshall Crum, Grant Fenner all check back into the game as Otterby now has lost the lead. As Matt Dennis also checks in and Baldwin Wallace will check out Jalen Hollinger. Cameron Kuhn at the line. As here on the game, Kuhn has yet to see the free throw line. He has 15 points though. The second player to get in double figures for Baldwin Wallace as he knocks down the free throw. Two point game, 345 and counting on the clock. Still far from over. Trey Miller bringing it across the time stripe as he's gonna wait and come off the screen. He comes off one from Fenner on the left elbow, gets to Fenner at the top of the key. Fenner looking to penetrate, right side of the rim, goes cool. up, he's fouled, so Grant Fenner will head to the charity stripe and look to add to his pretty stellar day so far. Four of nine from the floor, 12 points and seven rebounds. And also four for six from the charity stripe for Grant Fenner, and he was real close to getting that shot to fall down that time. So Grant Fenner, the Shelby High School native, at the line here, Fenner. Eyes it up and puts it in. Ooh. Big shot by Grant Fenner. And that's three times that we've seen it roll around. Yeah, Otterbein's gotten some really lucky free throws that look like they're going to fall out and then just happen to go in. Fenner puts up the second one, and that one again rolls in <laughs> off the front rim. And we're all tied up at 61. As now, 3.28 and counting on the clock, and Jaron Crow brings it across. We hear the student section starting to get into the game for the first time here tonight. Roth now has it. He's guarded there by Moyer. Pump fakes. Can't pick up the three. Now gives it to Kuhn at the top of the key. Kuhn guarded by McKenzie. Looking to penetrate. Goes up. Left side of the rim. Can't get it to go. Tipped around. And it's going to be tipped around still. And it's going oh. to stay with Baldwin Wallace as a hit off of the leg of Chase Moyer. It is who exactly it hit off of. It was being battled for there by Trey Miller. Fetheroff along with Moyer. And somehow... It went off the leg of Chase Moyer, 3.07 to go. A real bang, bang play there. I thought it could have went either way. Matt Dennis hands it off to Kuhn, who looks to penetrate. Pull up jumper from the free throw line, and Cameron Kuhn, another big bucket. And it's now a two point lead here for Baldwin Wallace. Cameron Kuhn now leads the team in scoring with 18. Yeah, that shot almost hit on the rafters of the right. It went so high up in the air. Trey Miller. Looking to set up the offense as he comes off a screen from Fenner. Gives it to him at the top of the key. Fenner holds there, guarded by Dennis. Goes inside the left block to Crum. Crum spins, goes up left side of the rim and gets it to go. Huge shot by Marshall Crum. And we're all knotted up at 63. 233 and counting. And you can feel the hostility here in this gym. As they hand off, now it's Fetheroff. Fetheroff hands it off to Kuhn at the top of the key. Oh. They go inside to Fetheroff. He's guarded there by Fenner, but he's fouled. That's a late call, a very late whistle as Fetheroff went up, and after he missed it, the whistle blew. Yeah, Fetheroff all by himself as he made that catch. Fenner had to really hustle to try to get down low to defend him underneath the basket, and I think Fenner was hesitating if he was going to foul him for a little bit. He finally did, and as Elijah said, it took a while for the Zebras to call that one a foul. And David, how about this? The student section standing up during the game for the first time all season <laughs> long. It is now 64-63. That's well, amazing what competitive basketball will do to you. Fetheroff knocks down the free throw as Trey Miller getting instruction here from Coach Adrian. And the second free throw is up and good. 65-63 now, Otterbein trails by two. Don't be surprised if Otterbein tries to run their offense through Marshall Crum again down low. Trey Miller dribbles it up high on the right. 
Guarded there by Crow. Comes off a screen again from Grant Fenner. Gives it to him at the top of the key. Fenner guarded there by Matt Dennis. They tried to go inside to Crum. Couldn't. And now Fenner looking to penetrate on the left side. He goes up in the middle of the lane. Gets it to go off the glass. Big shot by Grant Fenner. And Fenner comes up with another huge bucket. And that is one that will get him 16 on the night. 153 and counting here on the clock. The crowd into it right now. Roth has it at the left point, guarded by Chase Moyer. He penetrates the lane, goes up on Crum. Can't get it to go. It's an air ball. It's going to stay with Baldwin Wallace before the ball even went out of bounds. And Roth is not happy with the officials right now as he thought that he got fouled going to the glass. Well, if he air balled it, how is that going to stay with BW? I don't think any Otterbein players got a piece of it. They're going to say, I guess Marshall Crum got ah, a piece of it. That's a bad call. It looked like he kind of just whiffed on the shot, went out of bounds. But, yeah, there was much more contact down low. And given the way that the officials have called this game with a timeout on the floor, I would have figured there definitely would have been some sort of foul down low. 144 to go. We're all knotted up at 65. The closest an Otterbein game has been since David mentioned that capital game that they came away with the victory. And David, really, this game has, has been back and forth. And we mentioned it being a prize fight. Otterbein has taken the punches and they've given them right back. Yeah, and there's a bit of a difference between the capital game, Elijah. In that in that capital game, the final five minutes, Otterbein had the, the lead the entire five minutes. They were just fighting off capital. So they'd get a basket, stay on top. Capital would get a basket and try to claw back in. But Otterbein always had the lead. This game, very different. The lead has switched hands many times, and right now it's tied with a buck 44 to go, and be very interesting to see what Coach Adrian's drawing up down there off to our right. Yeah, and uh, for Baldwin Wallace, they took the full time out here, so that is the stoppage of action. 18 yeah. fouls for both sides. Uh, uh, what a huge game this is, Elijah, for Otterbein season. Obviously, you win this game at the end of the season conference standing-wise. It's not going to change much, but just for momentum, carrying into the final five games of the year after this one, and especially the Capital game next Saturday, and there's been a lot of rumors about Otterbein basketball next year, what it's going to be like. A victory like this would be really nice for the cards 65 hall and for otterbein they've had a pretty good game here as crow will inbound from the far side baseline 144 to go here in the game for baldwin wallace justin ross 17 points cameron coon with 18 that leads the team for otterbein it's grant fenner and he has 16 daryl miller the third has 10 marshall crumb with 12 huge, huge points. As now they inbound to Justin Roth on the far side corner, they give to Kuhn, now over to Crow on the far side wing. The crowd is absolutely into it right now as Crow comes off the screen, has it at the top of the key. Guarded there by Trey Miller and a foul is gonna be called here on Chase Moyer and Roth will head to the charity stripe. That's actually gonna be Kuhn that's gonna go to the charity stripe. And Coach Adrian, not happy with the officials, wants it called both ways is what he's asking for. Yeah, the third foul on Chase Moyer. And that one, a little bit ticky-tacky that time, if you ask me. Moyer couldn't believe they caught it on him. So now the crowd trying to distract Kuhn behind the bucket. 1.33 to go, and he knocks down the free throw. 66-65 our score. As Coach Adrian looks down towards the bench, and we'll see if he makes some substitutions coming up soon. As Kuhn puts up the second free throw, it's up and good. Fenner will inbound it for Ottermine. He gets it to Trey Miller. 1.33 as the clock moves. Miller brings it up high on the left. Guarded by Crow. Waits for a screen, now just holds it there. Comes off a screen from Grant Fenner as they switch the side. They go now to the top of the key, now into the high post with Grant Fenner. He spins, goes up, and gets it stripped away, and it goes in the hands of Justin Roth. And Crow will bring it up quickly, gets it up to Fetheroff, who goes up, lays it up. No good! <laughs> Rebound, he missed the layup, he blew the layup, and now Trey Miller will push. He tried to get it up the floor to Brian McKenzie, but it's tipped by Kuhn and out of bounds, and it'll stay with Otterbein. Kuhn wanted to travel yeah, as Trey Miller also almost uh, carried that basketball. Yeah, it was really close near midcourt. I thought Miller might have shuffled his feet, but BW blowing the opportunity of a lifetime right there to make it a four-point game, and they missed the easy layup right of the rim, and Otterbein, luckily that Miller did not travel, and luckily that when he tried to throw it to Moyer on the far side of the floor, it wasn't intercepted. It was just tipped out of bounds. 103 to go. Otterbein down 67-65. They inbound to Trey Miller. Has it high on the left. Hands it off to Brian McKenzie. Gives it to Moyer, who pump fakes a three. Now goes back to McKenzie at the left point. McKenzie waiting for a screen. Now comes off of it. Looks to penetrate on the right side. Goes up, and he is going to, they're going to call a timeout. Oh. Coach Adrian got the timeout before Brian McKenzie spun and threw the ball out of bounds. 
50.4 to go, and we got a two-point game, and we'll see if this is a 30-second. It is going to be a full timeout. So Coach Adrian takes a full timeout here to talk things over. And David, if you're Coach Adrian, who do you run this play to? Uh, that's a good question. There's been a whole lot of guys that have really stepped up for the Cardinals. And right there, McKenzie was trying to be the guy that steps up, a guy who usually doesn't want the pressure of shots like that, but he drove to the basket. But if you ask me, it's probably going to be Grant Finner. He had the last basket for Otterbein down low. Finner, so far right now, is sitting at 16 points a season, a career high for Grant Finner. You got to give it to the big guy down low. He's going to find a way to come up with a shot somehow. It's either him or Marshall Crump. As we said, Otterbein has run almost all their points from their forwards in their, this game. The guards have been almost non-existent. So you got to go down low either to Crump or to Finner. So again, Grant Finner, he's had probably the best game I'd say of the year for him. I mean, 16 career, points. Probably. Yeah, I'd say so. 16 points, 5 of 10 from the floor, 6 of 8 from the foul line for Grant Fenner. As well with 7 rebounds, a team high. For Daryl Miller the third, it's been 10 points on 4 of 6 shooting, 2 of 3 from beyond the arc. Also has 2 rebounds and 3 fouls here in the game. Christian Meister, he has 9. Marshall Crum has 12, and he also has 5 rebounds to his credit. And for Chase Moyer, hasn't really done it in the points department, David, but he's got six assists here in the basketball game. So Chase Moyer really having a good game uh, distributing the ball. And we've seen him have games like that where he's distributed the basketball. We've seen him have games where he's been able to score for Otterbein. He's really a do-it-all kind of guy. Yeah, without Phyllis in the game and with Miller taking on more of a scoring role here in this game, it's been Moyer that stepped up and passed the ball around for the cards. Chase Moyer looking to inbound now for Otterbein. Justin Roth will be guarding the inbound. As they inbound it to Brian McKenzie in the near side corner. 15 on the shot clock. They give it back out to Moyer. Back out to Trey Miller. 45 seconds on the game clock. 10 on the shot clock. Miller now picks up his dribble on the near side wing. Goes inside to Marshall Crum. He goes up with the spinning jumper. Gets it to go. Marshall Crum. Huge bucket. 38 seconds. Three second difference now between the shot clock and game clock. 67 all. It's coming down to the wire here as Crow brings it up and across the time stripe. Guarded there by Trey Miller. 24 now on the game clock, 20 on the shot clock. Crow backs it out. Trey Miller backs up off of him. Chase Moyer not allowing Roth to get the ball on the far side. Crow dribbles it to the right point. He's setting up the offense. Crowd is loud here in the right center. Petroff looking to hand it off. Gets it in to Matt Dennis. He looks to penetrate. Goes up. Right side of the rim. Gets it to go oh. in. One. 3.2 seconds. And Matt Dennis gets the bucket and the foul. He'll head to the oh. charity stripe to try and knock down the free throw. 3.2 to go. And that's the third foul that's going to be on Marshall Crum. That's a huge bucket by Matt Dennis. So Dennis will head to the line. And for Matt Dennis, that's going to be point number six on the evening. And a timeout is going to be called here. It's a full timeout for head coach Todd Adrian. Well, it's a 30 second. So they switch it up. It's a 30 second timeout for head coach Todd Adrian. He's at the draw of something pretty incredible here. We saw it against Heidelberg that he drew up a play in which Jason Davis had an open jumper from the near side corner off a long baseball pass and uh, just couldn't knock down the shot, but had a good look at it. And we'll see if Coach Adrian does something like that. Yeah, and Coach Adrian's going over some different situational things as well. Obviously, if Dennis makes this, Otterbein's going to need a three-pointer. They're going to have to go down the floor quickly after making the inbound. However, if Dennis misses it, you can still go for it too. Get a rebound. If you can push it down the floor quick enough and get it inside the yard, you can do it. It's a long shot with just 3.2 left, but it's certainly a possibility. We'll see what he has drawn up here as Matt Dennis again. We'll head to the charity strike. Try and make this a three-point basketball game. As Dennis looking to add free throws here from the charity strike. Crowd getting loud, trying to distract Dennis on the baseline. Free throw on the way for Matt Dennis is up and good. Three-point basketball game here for Baldwin Wallace and a timeout is going to be taken here by head coach Todd Adrian. A full timeout this time. 
Uh, and Christian Meister was already at the scores table before the timeout. So he's going to be one of the guys on the floor. You imagine if you're Coach Adrian, you're going to get some of those forwards off the floor, sitting in some of the better three-point shooting guards. This might be a situation where you'd like to have Mark McEwen because even though he's a big guy, he's really good at knocking down the three-pointers when he has to. Unfortunately, he's not going to be available, and it'll be interesting to see who they give it to. Grant Fenner's not a bad three-point shooter either. And, uh, David, you know, it, it wouldn't surprise me if they just throw it towards half court and then call a timeout. And that's what a lot of teams like to do with this amount of time on the clock. Three seconds, that's a lot of time. And if you can get that ball down court and call a quick timeout, find the official and call it. I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Adrian does that here or if, in fact, they just try and, and put up a shot uh, and get a good look deep down the floor off a couple of screens. But, David, I expect we're going to see another timeout here in about 10 seconds. Now, that, that wouldn't be a bad strategy by Coach Adrian. Try to just inbound it, get it across half court, take your timeout. That way you'll probably be around two seconds left if you can do that. Then you'll be in a much more manageable situation to inbound it and catch and shoot and come up with a three-pointer. I guess the question is, who do you get it to? Who do you try to get open in this situation to come up with that three-pointer? As we said, uh, Grant Finner, even though he's a forward, he's one of the better three-point shooters on this team. Christian Meister is going to be coming into the game for Otterbein. He's not a bad three-point shooter, but three-point shooting all year has not been Otterbein's forte, and we're going to have to see him right here knock one down to preserve the game and send it to overtime. So, again, uh, probably going to see Ball and Walls take a timeout here in about 10 seconds. And uh, that's exactly what it looks like here is we'll see. Well, they're going to just let it play out, it looks like. They're going to let it play out. So Baldwin Wallace does not take the timeout. Grant Fenner running the baseline, looking to throw it down the floor. Gets it into Marshall Crum. Crum gets it over to Trey Miller, and he traveled over and back. Oh. Over and back is the call. Trey Miller put up a half-court shot that went in. Over and back was and the, the call. The crowd's furious. I don't blame them. It's, a, it's the correct call, however. The over and back call. It was the right call as Trey Miller was beyond the half court line. And Marshall Crum didn't see where he was. 1.3 seconds and this game looks pretty much over if Baldwin Wallace can knock down some free throws. Oh, what a terrible way for such an exciting and great game to end. Unfortunately, it happens to the only senior on the team playing in one of his last games in the right center. To, uh, made the catch about five feet past the half court stripe, pitched it back to Miller, and the over and back call. Back to the Yellow Jackets. I mean, this was one heck of a performance here by Otterbein, just came up a bit short as there's 1.3 seconds. However, Otterbein, a steal, could change that. Here to get the steal. But David, for those high school recruits that have come here to watch this game, they've got a good one. Yeah, their, their uh, impersonation of Otterbein basketball might be a little bit different than someone who has tuned into every single game this year, but this is huge. Not right now, but for the future, all these potential Cardinals in the crowd seeing a great atmosphere here at the Reich and a great competitive basketball game. And not only that, really, for the future of Otterbein basketball, besides Marshall Crum, every single guy on the floor will be back next year for Otterbein. So this is obviously a very promising sign as Baldwin Wallace looking to inbound, can't find anybody right now. They get it to Kuhn, and he can't get fouled before the clock runs out. Kuhn gets it inbounds, and that's it. A three-point loss for Otterbein. They lose 70 to 67. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have the post-game show with post-game analysis and statistics and an interview with head coach Todd Adrian. You're listening to Otterbein Basketball on the Otterbein Sports Radio Network, your home for Cardinal Athletics. I thought I was too old. I thought I was too young. I didn't think I had what it takes. How would I find the time? Music store and tried some percussion, keyboard, guitar, and bass. ukulele. And before I knew it, I could actually play a song. Why make excuses when you can make music? Just play. This message brought to you by the NAM Foundation. Ever since our first sports broadcast in 1951, WOBN has been your first source for live Otterbein athletics. While radio has changed a lot since then, one thing remains the same, and that's WOBN keeps you up to date on Cardinal athletics like no other. With live broadcasts of football, basketball, baseball, soccer, and lacrosse, and weekly sports talk shows, 
Nobody covers Cardinal athletics like your Cardinal radio station. To the 10, 5, touchdown, Otterbein! 97.5 WOBN, your source for Otterbein sports for 64 years. This broadcast is copyright of WOBN 97.5 and may not be rebroadcasted, redistributed, or retransmitted without the express written consent of WOBN. I'm Drew Brees, and being a dad means the world to me. And one of the most important things any parent can do is make sure their kids get active at least 60 minutes each day. Studies show that physical activity not only helps kids stay healthy, it can enhance important skills like concentration and problem solving, which can improve academic performance. This means physical activity can help your kids in the most important game of all, life. Learn more at fitness.gov. Brought to you by HHS. Be sure to log on to WOBN.net for a complete broadcast schedule of music, talk shows, and sports. That's WOBN.net. Here comes the whistle. Strimbu lines it up. She shoots it. It's in! In the lower corner, Jillian Strimbu puts it in the back of the net, piles at the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Cardinals! Want to know more about Cardinal Athletics? Tune in Mondays from 6 to 7 p.m. to the Cardinal Sports Wrap with me, Elijah Gonzalez. I'll break down all the Otterbein sports from the previous week and look forward to the matchups ahead. We'll have interviews from players and coaches as well, only here on WOBN 97.5 The Wild Card, your home for Otterbein Athletics. Welcome you back to the Reich Center where the Otterbein Cardinals fall 70 67 to the Yellow Jackets of BW in a very heartbreaking fashion. The Cards have now dropped nine in a row and their season record will fall to 3 and 18, 2 and 12 in conference play. The Yellow Jackets are going to advance to 15 and 6 overall, 9 and 5 in Ohio Athletic Conference play. I'm David Kinder, Elijah Gonzalez off to my left, and we just witnessed a very exciting game. And you're listening to the Ohio Health Post Game Show brought to you. By Ohio Health, a family of not-for-profit faith-based hospitals and uh, health care organizations serving Central Ohio since 1891 for individual physicians or overall health care. They're on the web at ohiohealth.com. That's ohiohealth.com or 614-4-H-E-A-L-T-H, 614-4-HEALTH. Let's take a look at the final statistics in this ball game. The Yellow Jackets well, ended up shooting 26 of 63 from the floor, 41%. 8 of 23 on three-pointers. Seven of those, though, came in the first half. 10 of 14 from the line. They had 38 rebounds, turned it over nine times. Otterbein shot 52%, 26 of 50, 3 of 10 from long range, 2, 12 of 15 from the charity stripe. They had 29 rebounds, turned it over 13 times. Leading the way in scoring, it ended up being Cameron Kuhn. He had 20 points in this ball game for the Yellow Jackets, 8 of 11 from the field. Justin Roth was very good in the first half of this ball game, cooled off in the second, still ended up uh, with 17 points in the game. Leading the way in scoring for Otterbein, it was Grant Finner who had 16 uh, points, 5 of uh, 10 from the field. Marshall Crum, who came off the bench to replace the injured Mark McEwen, 6 of 7 from the field for the only senior on the team. He had 14 points. Miller uh, was the only other Cardinal in double figures with 10. So Otterbein falls 70 to 67. And the last play of the game, you just heard it. Otterbein setting up for a long three-pointer to try to tie the game, send it to overtime. The inbound pass goes to Marshall Crum near the half-court mark. He pitches it back to Daryl Miller to set up for a long three-pointer. Miller makes the shot, but it's called for an over in the back. As Elijah said, it's the right call, but a very frustrating way to end a great basketball game. Yeah, it, uh, it was the right call, as I mentioned. Uh, but, you know, for Otterbein, really, David, I, I take away more positives than negative. Yeah, they lost that basketball game, and yeah, that probably keeps them out of the OAC tournament. But at the same time, you got to look at the positives. This is a ball and Wallace team that, might we mention, was a team that competed with Mount Union and made it a very close game against them. And um, not only that, but they played very, very good uh, down the stretch here. And really, I mentioned that um, that, that uh, Baldwin Wallace could not have their role players get going. And really, they did not. Justin Roth had his 17 points. Cameron Kuhn had, uh, had his 10 points, or had his 20 points, I mean. But besides that, David, nobody, nobody else for Baldwin Wallace was in double figures. You look at the Otterbein roster, and honestly, David, you really have to think, 
what would this game have been like if Jake Phyllis could have finished out the game and did not get hurt? Because Phyllis, while he only had five points, he was two of seven from the floor, he really was making an impact both offensively and defensively. And if Jake Phyllis could have been on the floor, I really see um, four guys going into double figures. But in this game, uh, uh, Trey Miller, he had a bunch of big buckets early in that second half that really brought Otterbein back. And uh, they tied the game, ended up taking the lead off a couple of those Trey Miller threes. And he had 10 points. And then Fenner, of course, with the 16. The, the bigger story for Grant Fenner, though, was the seven rebounds. That's something that Coach Adrian has stressed with Grant Fenner. You have to get on the glass. And he, tonight, he did that. But the big story that I, I know that everyone at Otterbein is going to be talking about is the presence of Marshall Crump. We've yet to see a breakout game for Marshall Crum this season, and we have finally witnessed it. We've witnessed a Marshall Crum game that we saw last year at the end of the year before he broke his jaw in this game against Baldwin Wallace right here at the Reich Center. So for Marshall Crum, it's a little bit of revenge for uh, what Baldwin Wallace did to him last year, but also uh, it's got to be uh, happy. You got to be happy for Marshall.